the German into second place with a 65. But still out in front is major champion Patty Tavertanikit. Controlled and classy so far, the tie on top. A three-shot lead for Patty T, who has stretched that advantage by a shot every day. But so much talent lurking. It's a top 10 with three major champions and three ladies European Tour number ones. Hello and welcome, good afternoon to you. Perfect day, really is for golf and should be a super final day's play in Riyadh for this Aramco Saudi Ladies International presented by PIF. Event two of the new season and in terms of standalone LET events, well, it really doesn't get much better than this. Star names, a $5 million prize fund. It's the largest event in golf to achieve pay parity with the male equivalent. The last four editions of this event, the trophy's been lifted at Royal Greens. This time, we're at Riyadh Golf Club, which hosted the Aramco Team Series event here back in October. I'm Richard Kaufman, alongside me in the commentary box, Kate Burton and former LET player Sophie Walker. Sophie, Paddy Tavertanik has led well, pretty much since Thursday morning. Do you expect her still to be at the top in four hours' time, though? This is going to be a big test for Patty Tabatanikit. She hasn't won since that Chevron Championship in 2021. She does look cool, confident and committed. I think her interviews after play have shown a, a more positive side to Patty Tabatanikit, but she has not got over the line and there's been attempts and failures. So this is a big mental hurdle for her to carry on her shoulders today. Well, the leaders went out just about an hour ago. And in fact, if you look at the players just behind her, uh, Patty Tavertanik, there's a, a bunch of what you call big name players, but all of them have waited a little while for their last win. And I suppose you could put Emily Pedersen into that bracket. You certainly could, but she has won here before. She won the inaugural Aramco Saudi Ladies International. And if she can produce shots like that in this final round, she's certainly going to be a threat. That was her second to the third at the second, which she did go on to birdie. And then there was Charlie Hull. Now, I think this player is the big threat. She's the world number eight. She is not afraid on the golf course. This was her second shot to the fourth hole. She did go on to make a birdie, and so Charlie will be looking to make her presence felt. She's currently only three shots off the pace after rolling that birdie in. And as we heard from her last night with the interview, she's got nothing to lose. She just loves playing golf and relishes competition. Well, Lester Henselite loves the front nine. She's gone out in 31 on Friday and Saturday. She birdied the second hole there. And then hit a beauty into the fourth to set up her second birdie of the day. Around a 65 yesterday, looking for something similar today. So Esther Henselite moving to 10 under par, which has been good enough to take her within two shots of the lead. Patty Tavertanik, it did open up with a birdie, but Kate maybe should have had a couple more. Well, for sure, oh, leaving that one in the jaws. That was her birdie attempt at the second hole. So she's had the lead throughout the course of this championship, and she had that at the ANA, where she went on to win by two shots over Lydia Ko. Will history repeat itself today? Let's find out. But here she is, and here she was a few moments ago. That was at the fourth just leaving it agonizingly short but she still has her nose out in front by two shots so she's 12 under and Richard it's interesting that when she won the ANA she won 465,000 US dollars if she wins today there's about 300,000 dollars more at stake yeah big money event and uh, plenty at stake but who is going to emerge on top Patty Tavertanik still in front then two shot lead now over Esther Henselite Chanati Wanaseyan, the 19-year-old from uh, Thailand, a winner last year on the LPGA Tour, made three birdies in a row from the second. Minami Katsu out in 32, Alice Houston out in 33. Three Germans inside the top 10. Really impressive from Lexi Furstelin, considering she opened up with a 77 on day one. Disappointing start for Yuka Sasa, a couple of early bogeys. She has bounced back with a, a birdie. Georgia Hall making sixes at uh, two of the par fives on the front nine. And Amy Yang, that's a big surprise, isn't it, Sophie? Bogey, bogey, bogey start from the Korean. Yeah, something that we just didn't expect to see from the world number 15. Well, this is the par five fifth, and on the green in two, 
is the chasing Charlie Hull. Well, Charlie's been in the gym a lot over the off season, has been adding plenty of strength and to reach this green in two. I know it is downwind, but it's 500 and 25 yards dog leg from left to right and she's got this short put left for eagle this would be a significant move and to get within one of the lead well, what a shot in she's hit there what a three this would be oh. you know she was robbed to hit it that close on this par five to have that eagle putt still it is three birdies in the opening five holes just the start she would have been looking for within two now it's interesting i was talking to amy yang's caddy this morning yarn miling he goes yeah nobody's going to reach the par fives in two today that was the caddy's perspective well it's into the wind with the tee shot yeah but the second shot you can ride it with a left to right wind because of the dog leg from left to right charlie's been in the golf simulators back at home and she has been really pushing that swing speed She's uh, got away with her tee shot here, hasn't she? Shana T. Wanasean. Blinken, you miss her. One of the fastest players on tour coming up a fraction shy. It is so refreshing to watch her. I'll tell you what, the cameramen who are following her are going to need to be fit to keep up with her. She pulls the trigger very quickly. That's a five for uh, Manon DeRoy, remember, missed that short putt at the last yesterday and made bogey and open up with a couple of bogeys in the first three holes here. She's uh, a little bit off the pace now, four under. Yeah, both of Charlie's playing partners are, are struggling, playing alongside Amy Young, who we mentioned had those three bogeys. Now, this is that fifth hole where Charlie Hull knocked it in close, and if Charlie can do it, you feel Emily Pedersen can. Well, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, above that leaderboard, that's where the flag is. So you've got to cut all the way across the water. I mean, it, sh it shouldn't be in play, this water, but this looks to be three-wood for Emily. Have to start it at the bunker on the left-hand side of the green and let the wind hit it from left to right. far off it so a chip and a putt for Pedersen that would help her campaign what a strong golf I've got, I've got getting more sleep now this weekend been struggling with jet lag all week Thursday night could only manage three hours but last night and well the night before that was a full nine hours and that certainly helped propel her up the leaderboard with that excellent round yesterday of 66 if you take it down the right hand side off the tee you can cut this corner it's a dog leg from left to right but when you do cut the corner, you have to take on the entire of the lake and the desert. So it looks like Hence Light is playing away from that. Not that Paddy Tavitanik is doing anything wrong, but. She has seen her lead cut from three to two. The chasing pack are, are giving us something to think about. Yes, certainly Esther Henslight will be one of them. Now, Tavatanikic, she's got the firepower. Asking for it to go. Oh. <laughs> it went. What an effort that is. That's up there with Charlie Hulls. That was incredible. What a shot. How did she get it to sit so softly as well? Teach me. I want to see that again. The balance she has in her goal swing, but out the speed. I mean, 145 mile an hour ball speed for a three wood off the deck. That was so good. Well, Charlie Hull has been making some inroads into that lead, but yeah. Patty Tabatanik. Yeah, I, I agree. At yeah. the six. Yeah, another, you know, finishing on it, you know, finishing on it, maybe just left side of the time. Yeah, three ladies European tour titles for Charlie Hull. First came when she was only 18.
front left pin. You can see how much downwind this hole is playing. Landed on the downslope, not even Charlie Hull could hold it. It's well protected, isn't it, by that front bunker? teenager from Thailand. She'll fancy this one. I well, got lucky off the tee. He's going to escape here with a part. Back to what is uh, a tricky par 3 six. Yeah, that bunker does make you club up. You know, you want to hit nine iron at it. Let's bring the front bunker into play. That's the only way to get it close here. Trying to chop it up from left to right. DeRoy now outside the uh, the top ten. Had a good finish here last year. Finished third. Made a lot of money. It's 750,000 to the winner. If you come second, it's 450,000 US dollars. Well, when she won in September, the Portland Classic, 63 in the final round. Three under for the day so far, I want to say it. 63 today may be competitive. I've never seen an outfit like that. That's a hoodie dress. Now, Sophie, I can't see you in one of those, but that's quite a striking, striking look, isn't it? I'm glad you Reduced. are, Sophie. I was going to ask you, but I knew you were going to come out with some dad joke, so I wasn't sure about no, the no, response. No, no, you did well to avoid. <laughs> and Sophie, I've noticed the silence on that one. Yeah. It, Esther Henselite, who has uh, both those ladies' European tour wins of, of coming Kenya. Now that tree in there, I think it is in the way. It's certainly between her and the flag. Well, that's because it's a front left pin, Richard. Eight on four from the left. And she's got about 60 yards to this pin. You know, has to go upstairs. And, and you would normally hit it this high with the lob wedge. Downwind. much else landed it on the downslope it arguably shows just how good Patty Tavatanakit shot is in there if you're short left here it's a good pin actually because with all the water down the right hand side you want to hit it left with your second but then it leaves you short-sided and you can really see the slope there that Emily Pedersen is going to have to face and if anything in Emily's game this is the area that she does need to work on she's outside the top 200 last year around the green on the LPGA tour losing nearly half a shot around from in and around the greens and once again this one's going to have to go high lay the lob wedge open and trying to land it on that slope and somehow stop it maybe even try and get it to hit the pin that's delicious so hopefully should get uh, pedersen under par for the day You can see the flag is flapping. It, it, it's a breezy day, certainly cooler today than it's been uh, the last few days. Yesterday was very warm. Not as windy as it was certainly Thursday. Thursday, we got the winds here of around 30 miles an hour. Very different to when we were here for the Aramco Team Series event in uh, Riyadh. Now, this is at 10. Minami Katsu out in 32. This is looking good. Oh! oh. It's more than good. Had second thoughts, didn't it? That helps. Give She's the in the show of fourth now. Wow, give the fans and the cows something to cheer about here. So remember, Patty is still to putt for an eagle. Esther Henslein, one of her closest pursuers alongside Charlie Hull. This is now for a birdie, but from much longer range. Oh, 
Well, she's birded this hole every single day so far as the German, but not to be today. Only a par for the 25-year-old. Well, she's got herself within two, but that could be four if this one drops from the leader. Open up on Thursday morning with four straight birdies. She was overtaken briefly yesterday by Nicole brock -Estrup, but otherwise she has been top of that leaderboard from the get-go. Has left a couple of these short. She's had the line. Can't see her making that same mistake three times in a row. Eagle put to come from 10 feet. Finds one. Well, what a three. And what a big move in this final round from Patty Tavatanakit. 14 under par, and now her biggest lead of this championship. It is four shots. And remember, she's only made two bogeys this week. So the mistakes aren't going to be there from Tavatanaka. I think she's maybe making a bogey around, that's it. Yeah, she just looks so in control. When you can produce shots like she just did with that second at five, if that's in your armory, why wouldn't you be confident? Pedersen now knows she, well, she's got to make this already. Seven behind. Quick one. Well, it's a good four, but lost ground. So Pedersen uh, moves to eight under par. A little bit of a scoring change to give you. We saw uh, Chanati Wanase and right by the water playing her second at the seventh. The reason why she. Uh, was playing by the water, she actually had gone in here. So she actually took a drop, it was a bogey five for her, so she's back at seven under par, but it's a very decent advantage. Very healthy right now for Patty Tavatanikit. Yeah, Alice Houston out in 33. Minami Katsu, big charge up the leaderboard from the Japanese player. She's now in that share of fifth place. Ten-time winner on the Japan Tour, but the problem for the chasing pack right now is Patty Tavatanaka has gone out the opening five holes, Sophie, in three under. Massive issues. You know, if Patty Tavatanaka shoots the low round of the day, she wins, and, and that's what her and her caddy Jason will be saying. Also, we've waxed lyrical about a one-shot lead, a two-shot lead, a three-shot lead. I think that's a quite a nice idea for them between themselves to be like, hey, should we try and make it four this time? And then the trophy takes care of itself. Mention what a lovely front nine it was from Alice Houston. Here she is at 10. A little bit of green to work with, but tossing it up and letting the slope bring it round. But uh, that is not her best attempt. to the striking Chanetti Wanasayan in the dress. What can she conjure up at the eighth? Oh, an absolute cracker. How about that for a response? That was super. Guys, aren't you loving the pace at which she plays? I think the pace of play has been good all round this, this week. I mean, Thursday was a little slow, but that's because the wind was blowing. 30 miles an hour, Charlie Holt, beautiful T-shirt at six. Look how far it's spun out. Well, that's the pace, isn't it? He's kept that one out, and those are, the, you know, you can't miss those type of putts. She's the closest competitor, along with Esther Henselite. And I mean, 
mean to get it that close on six. So that was a a really good put. Oh, that was a really good put from the back edge, wasn't it? And you thought, oh, here you go. She's just going to rock this one in for par. And now she stood over three and a half feet. Well, the flag's flapping around. I mean, we were told today the breeze was only going to get up to so 10 now miles an hour. Yeah, four feet left for bogey. Remember, she was at the back edge of the green. So a drop shot for Charlie Hull. Yeah, well spotted, Sophie. It is a four for Charlie Hull. So she's back at nine under and far from making up ground. She's actually losing ground now. I'm just taking a photo of that because I think in a 10 years' time, that's going to look very different, that skyline. Well, we had the CEO of yeah. uh, Golf Saudi, Noah Ali Reza, with us in commentary yesterday for a short while. And uh, he was agreeing with you on that one, Kate. Yeah, it will look very different, I would think, within the next 12 to 24 months. It's a bit like what's happened in Dubai, isn't it? Looks like the same's going to happen in Saudi. And this is where Paddy Tavatanaka is. And this is the sixth hole. Just fresh off an eagle on the fifth hole. Stay there. Oh, that is so lucky. You, you're talking about not being short here. I know it's downwind, but take that front bunker out of play. You've got a full shot lead. So a mistake from the leader, but has got away with one. So hard to get close to a front pin when it's downwind. The strike has to be so pure. It has to come down steep. This is where the longer hitters should be at an advantage. Somebody like Emily Pedersen. Bunker sure. But it's just so hard, isn't it? You can see from the Charlie Hole tee shot, you know, you, you get it up hole high, it's going back in that little funnel left of the flag. And then if you come up short, you in Pedersen territory. Yeah, and the thing is, downwind, you don't want to be hitting a three-quarter shot because that takes a spin off it and the fly down, which is just going to release it further to the back of the green. So if they're in between a, a nine or an eight time, they're going to go, right, I'll hit a hard nine. But if you don't get all of it or the wind doesn't gust at the right time, you're going to be in that front bunker. It does seem stronger than 10 miles an hour right now, doesn't it? And he feels that way. Now the tall athletic swing of oh, Esther Henslight. Suddenly giving that some welly. And able to get that control that you were talking about, Sophie. These players have had to play every shot in the bag this week. And also with a completely different wind direction that has changed temperature as well. It's, it's practically been two different golf courses. Same one Thursday and Friday and a different one over the weekend. Well, that tee shot deserves a two, and it gets it. Bounce back birdie from Wanasin. She plays well. She'll be fancying her chances next week when the LPGA Tour and several of these players head to Thailand for the Honda LPGA. This for three birdies in a row for Alice Houston on ten. Uh, a par part we saw it just short of the green in two so it's going to be a unfortunately a drop shot after a, an excellent front nine for the english player finished third share of third last week in kenya which was the uh, opening event of the season you know you're at the ninth because you can hear the music playing it's either that or 18. First inning, making a really good move the last few days after opening with a round of 77. Yeah, you certainly know when you're at an Aramco event, there's no shortage of music on the tee, first and tenth, and also on the 18th as well. And when we are in Saudi Arabia, the ever-present camels. That You know, they were taken for a walk last night. There was a, a whole herd of them walking down the 18th fairway after play, thankfully. It wasn't during play. A 
and uh, certainly we had the giraffes last week in Kenya and this week it's the camels. Well, it has a plug, so this shouldn't be too difficult. About seven yards of green to work with, pitching into an upslope. from Pedersen. So this for the five for Houston. Well, they set 82% of the greens this week, so hasn't had to chip much, however. This one is very inviting. Use the slope from right to left. Yes. Really a case of catch me if you can for Patty Tabatanikin. Very solid start indeed. Three under for this final round. Looking solid. Just got to wonder what's running through her mind. Hopefully, not much, and that's what all golfers want. Keep it simple. Well, many players play three holes at a time, don't they? They try and be under par for the three holes. Yeah. So she's played two lots of three holes, and she's done that. She's achieved that, and then they start at level par again, go into the seventh, and it just keeps them in the present and keeps them, you know, thinking about a, a small goal ahead of them. Whereas if you're Henselite, you have that goal. You know where Patty Tavatanica is. You know you fall back. It's going to come off the bunker from left to right to start with. Statistically, the best putter in the field this week. So we would have expected more from that. Just a three for Henselite. Well, she started working with a, a new putting coach, David Orr, who's based at Pine Needles. Sort of the uh, about a year ago, just just under a year ago. I know that she was on the phone to him this morning. I don't know what time that was at Pine Needles, but David was up and about anyway. I think more of a pep talk than anything to do. I mean, the man. She's had 15 birdies in the last two rounds. I don't think she needs too much putting <laughs> coaching right now. She's inserted herself into a good position. Putting hasn't worked so far for Charlie Hull in this final round. She hit it close for an eagle opportunity, couldn't convert that. And then that's on the front edge, but she's missed a couple of short putts so far, Charlie, to really put pressure on the lead, to try and make a dent on that 14-under, which is holding pace at the moment by Paddy Tavatanica. mentioned about losing shots around the green last season on the LPGA that's two excellent up and downs from the Dane on five and six and even if someone like Emily Pedersen can't win it's a big day given Solheim cut points that are up for grabs she had to rely on a captain's pick I think she lived up to uh, what Suzanne Pedersen required in Spain but she'd love to get in automatically this time around Top 10 last week in Kenya, player who won twice in the last half a dozen events of the 2023 season. And the top Lexi this week, isn't she, first thing? Lexi Thompson has also been in the, the field this week, but unfortunately Lexi unable to make in an imprint on the leaderboard, but has closed with a round of 71 here in the early part of the afternoon. It's a dominant performance so far this week from Patty T. the Aramco Saudi Ladies International. And we're on the seventh tee with the leader. 
three wood for Patty Tavitanica. Downwind. Looks beautiful, looks so rhythmical. And rewarded with another great drive. Not even needing the big driver this time. We can get so wrapped up in how far players hit it. You know, when you watch at home, you love hearing drives going in excess of 300 yards in the, on the women's game. But for a player like Paddy Tavatanica, she's often talked about that's not her focus, of course. She's looking at how many greens she can hit, how many birdie chances she can create. And she's doing a very good job of that right now. And putting herself in a pos perfect position off the tee. Same approach for Pedersen. Fairway runs out here, doesn't it? Just about 300 yards. So driver may well take them through. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Paddy's <laughs> hit a 300-yard three wood. So yeah, driver <laughs> would have been in the water. You kind of have to check your yardages, don't you, when she's uh, when she's on the tee. She's hitting it so well. I think it shows what needs to be done around this golf course because all three of these players will sit high on the strokes gained off the tee. Driver for Henslight. Yes, and Sophie, you bring up strokes gained. Which is a, a you know, which are stats that are widely used across all professional tours, and that mainly means how well these players fare against the rest of the field. They're picking up strokes on the rest of the field by hitting it so well off the tee. Three jerks in the top ten is one of them, Olivia Cowan. Oh, she was playing for the front edge there, playing for release, and that's come up half a club shy. The game's gone up a notch or two, hasn't it, in the last 12 months? Yeah, she's finally going into the gym and doing weights, I hear. So, well, Kate yeah. should know. I, mean, I, she'd I bumped into everybody this yeah. week. Had a day off today, it's Sunday. Well, it hasn't been that way. Yeah. Well, she's had her struggles around the greens at times yeah. this week, Charlie Hull, but that was a, a lovely touch from her. Chasing this one up, coming out of the rough, but that's not going to be enough. So narrow on night, yeah. you just have to hit the hit the fairways in order to land on the green. Because if not, then you are thinking front edge, and you can see it. It's it's a funnel, isn't it? That enters that green. It's a hard one to hit. Maybe this rough, it's just not jumping like the players. The lie might suggest it's going to jump, but we've just seen there. It's not happened on both occasions down nine. Oh. So a four-shot lead over Esther Henselite. Well, we know what uh, Patty Tanaka has been up to since she finished that excellent round of 69. She told you yesterday, Kate, she was going to read a few novels and <laughs> yeah. do a lot of thinking. Yeah, she's reading a couple of books at the moment, Patty Tanaka. One called Owning Pressure and the other one, The Fourth Wing. That's more of a novel, a bit kind of Nicole Garcia like Nicole Garcia being the uh, resident librarian on tour. The owning pressure, she's certainly owning it right now. A couple of sixes on this front nine for Georgia Hall, so her last day challenge has not emerged. Georgia Hall, the champion here in 2022. Georgia Hall uh, was uh, an interesting story with Shannon Tan, last week's winner, who was uh, too scared to go up to Georgia Hall, who is one of her heroes. But they did meet yesterday, didn't they, Sophie? Yeah, the Ladies European Tour officials, they, they got them together. And Shannon may have missed the cut, but she said, this happens, very starstruck. Yeah. That's cool. Well, a few weeks ago, she was an amateur turns pro, wins on the Ladies European Tour, and now playing with her heroes. Nice touch, that. Uh, 
Madame de Roy now to strike the first blow at the eighth hole. And has talked all week about the new irons that she's got in her bag and how Sophie, she's getting a lot more control with them distance-wise and just how important that is when you're playing at the very top of the game. Well, a lot of people like the look of those players' irons, those, those blades, but they can't hit them. Nowadays, the manufacturers build a club, which is a cavity back, but it looks like a blade. And actually, when you're as good a ball striker as Manon de Roy, you don't need that because you get a flyer out of nowhere. So she's gone to a, a more, what you'd say, a harder club to hit, but that gives her more control. Let's see how it goes here. She'll fade this one into a down wind right to left hole. Just stops quicker. If, if you look at the likes of De Roy against other players, she has the ball speed of other players, but sometimes her ball comes down a bit too hot, which will change now with those new irons. Just three quartering one in downwind here for Emily Pedersen, and well, she didn't get the release. Maybe this wind is just knocking shots down. I've seen so many players short on seven. Twenty-year-old Korean in the top 50 of the world, Min Byo Kim, who had uh, two playoff defeats on the Korean tour last year. So many top tens. What a talent, though! And there is another example. Yeah, it was a rookie season last season in Korea. Worth reminding at this point, players like Min Byo Kim, who's in the top 50 of the world, the field made up of 60 players from the LET. Light all over it. She's a player that changes her clubs at the beginning of the year. They're the same iron, same wedges, but they're new grooves. And I can't believe going down the, the range how many players don't do that because that's what you can get from it. Those fresh grooves from 80 yards, you can just nip it in. And I mean, Patty Tabatanica is looking to do exactly the same. She's also got around that 80 yard number after a nearly a 300 yard, well, a 300 yard drive with a three wood. Ready to attack this pin. And she does just that, all over it. Well, we wondered whether we'd see the uh, same Patty Tabatanikin from days one, two, and three in this final round. Given the things that have happened to her since that wonderful win at Rancho Mirage. Careful. See, hasn't put a foot wrong all week. <laughs> Could have resist. Wedge for Charlie on eight. Right pin at the bottom of a down slope. Flag hunting. She's got it, hasn't she? That drop shot on the last par three. Stopped her in her tracks. Janetti, one aside. Now this burning opportunity. In fact, this is for a par at the ninth. And after a second shot short. So that's going to be a drop shot for Cianetti. Currently in sixth place all by herself on seven under. And in fact, will drop to seven under with that bogey pan. Well, here's our friend. Oh. So th there's one that's famous there and one that's not so famous. Which one's the famous one? The white one, Richard. Yes, that is a $3 million camel right there. And on the left is her assistant. Bahat assistant... Shamar is Ooh, the name of yes. the camel on the right. Came second at the King Abdulaziz Festival. See, I don't just do golf research. <laughs> we do camel research. You've this really week. got to get out more. I'm a great hit at parties, Kate. You know I am. <laughs> you don't go to any. Come on. <laughs> well, I haven't seen you at a party for ages. Come on, we'll have to get him out sometime, Sophie. You will be paddling this week, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you didn't even come and play paddle, no, Richard. God, come Dodgy on. knees. Oh, that's the excuse this week. You two are too good, though, I think, as well. Oh, no, not... No. It was good. I've got to, we I've got were to... really good last night, and then... I had a bad back nine. Yeah, I had a really bad back nine. So, Patty Tavatanikit looking so assured and in control. Who, who right now, then, would be her biggest danger? Herself? 
with a four shot cushion Charlie Hull has not putted well, but the great thing about Charlie Hull is that she has the memory of a goldfish, so she'll put that out of her way. So I think Charlie could still be a threat, even though she's five back. Hens are like... I don't know. I think this is significant here. I yeah. think if she misses an Esther Hulls, we're game on. If she, this one goes in, then she just keeps them at arm's length. It's, it's, this could be really important for momentum. Because Hens are like making birdie. Did everything but drop. Good effort from Tava Tanakit, but yeah, that could be some inroads into the lead from Esther Henselite here. But you make a good point, Richard, though, about Patty, in that she hasn't won since that major, and the demons have got to her on the mental side of the game. So that is, you know, keeping it simple for Patty is going to be key. No birdie for Olivia Cam, but just going back to Patty, Tava Tanakit, no par, I should say, though, for the German. So first drop shot of the day, one birdie, one bogey. Remember when we were watching Patty Tavatanakit at the Ramco Team Series Bangkok event in, in 2022? She fritted away shots over that front nine. She wobbled, she looked nervous. It's a very different looking Tavatanakit today. Oh, I said Henselite would hold this. She has her putting boots on this week. She's oh. pushed it, she knew straight off the face, didn't she? The wow. curse of Walker struck there, I think. Uh, I think the curse are getting closer. Not won for a while, has she? Lost in a playoff in Northern Ireland. And these are the chances you've got to, you've got to take if they've got a four-shot lead. She's strong in the finishing rounds, though, hence tonight. You look at her numbers on the LPGA last year. Chasing them, yeah. this hole yesterday and everything but a man on the Roy on the eighth man yeah, on the Roy was the person that won in Bangkok because of the Patty Tavatanic at poor final day but what I would say there is she had her friend caddying for her she didn't have Jason and remain six back. And it's another putt that remains above ground for Charlie Hull. I think it's highlighting how close Charlie is right now. We saw it so many times last year, five seconds, and you, you thought, well, you know, what's going to happen this year? Is it just going to go back to, you know, what was? And I, I think it's it's only going up again. She's not resting on her laurels, and she's putting well, I think. She's rolling it well. It's just, look at that there, an inch shy of pace. Well, round of the day so far has come from uh, the 25-year-old from Japan, Minami Katsu, who's a six under for the day, and moved herself into a tie for fourth. Patty Tavatanaka increasing her lead overnight from three to four shots. Major champions uh, everywhere you look in the field. Ash Buhai, another of them. She's moved into a share of 10th. this oak hole surrounded by water but should really come into play for these players 50 degree wedge for Tavatanakit <laughs> so oh. good oh it's better than good it's oh. spectacular <laughs> danced around the hole I mean all but a hole in one for Patty Tavatanakit she looks like a rock right now in this final round. Let's have another look. Jeez, that tempo. Oh, I thought over. it was going to spin back there. I thought it was going to come in the back door. 
Oh, well, this is so exciting to watch. To see her come out of the doldrums. Yeah, it's been a doubly, a lot of these golfers are on first name terms with their demons. Paddy Tabatanica could be one of those golfers, but certainly not today. Playing with huge amounts of confidence. Well, how do you respond to this? How many Pedersen? Well, she's got to knock it in close just to keep the pace. It's not the best pin for Emily, is it? She likes to hit it right to left, and that wind is edging it from right to left as well. Pentalite won't mind it, though. She's got a bit more of a neutral flight. Especially with the honour. Patty Tavatanikit there do, doing that. She put the pressure back on. She got a let off on the last. Pentalite missed. But just put the pedal to the metal there. Pressure right now on the shoulders of Henselite. Has to make birdie. She's four back. Soon to be five if she can't come up with a two, because Tavatanica in very close. It's a solid shot, but it looks particularly average compared to the tee shot of Patty. Really want to find the fairway here at nine. Ooh. That's down the right side. Did that hit a palm? Yeah, it yeah. did. It bounced that. She um, she gave that a good old club twirl, like she liked that one. She was trying to take it over the corner, wasn't she? Yeah. It's a different line, I think, this weekend because it's so significantly downwind. How many players have we seen shorten two at this par four? Finale a couple over today. That pin is 20 yards on. I think the reason they're short is because they're not finding the fairway off the tee and they're playing for the jumping lie downwind and it's not coming. It'll be interesting to see where Charlie Hull's drive has ended up. Cut off more than she could chew, trying to go over that dog leg. It's a good hole of the night coming back towards the clubhouse. There you see there, Richard. To your point, another player who's come up shy. A lot of green to work with now for Georgia Hall. It's too hard. This ninth green is very similar to the 17th and how quick it is. Well, it's a gorgeous day. Temperatures uh, absolutely ideal, just in the mid 20s. A uh, bit of breeze around, testing, but. Nothing like what we saw Thursday and Friday. But not as calm as we saw here when uh, Alison Lee was posting those 61s en route to victory. Well, this is the simplest of birdie putts. A five shot lead for Patty Tavatanakin. Four under par for eight holes when you have a three shot lead. That's the start. That's the start you want. She's flying. Boom. moment it's a, a good race for second place it's very tight all right that's the hand tonight $450,000 for second place it is a good race for it and that's why these players will always keep in the hunt you know they want to win that's you know that's still could happen because obviously there is 11 holes left but there's no way that they'll be They'll be backing off and falling over the finish line with the amount of money that is on offer this week here in Saudi. I think the 
this would want to move off the left hand side back towards the water. Well, it's been a good start for us to hit so like two under par for the day. But when uh, the player you're trying to chase has done what Paddy Tavitalik has done, well, what can you do? It is hard for these players to, to put the pressure on Patty in the sense that they can't dominate her off the tee. She is just as long as Emily Pedersen and longer than Henselite. And then she's hitting their approaches closer. Henselite would have been hoping that she'd have been first to play into all these holes on the front nine and trying to get it closer than Patty Tavatanikit, but, but she's not since our coverage started. Every time we're looking at Patty, she's in near. And that eagle on the fifth kind of really did pull her away. And since then, she's just knocked the flags out. Racing it by the hole on the ninth was Georgia Hall. So this is now for a par. Too far back, the English woman. Yeah, it's so frustrating when you, you make sixes in the two par fives on this front nine, and that is, uh, I think, three over for the day. Well, what's the lie like for Charlie Hull? Well, thankfully, the palm tree spat it out left, didn't it? So it's a dog leg left to right this ninth hole, and she went over all those bunkers, found the wasteland. Has to go low to avoid the palm tree branches not skipping it through there. That's the change to Riyadh Golf Club this year. They've grown the rough in. It's a good shot, it was well executed. Yeah, worth pointing out, they've lengthened the course as well, haven't they? They have, it's gone a good 400 yards longer. 6,830 6, yards. Today it's playing a little bit short of that. They've moved the tee box forward on the third. And remember when Alison Lee won here, she won by eight shots. Alison Lee, good to see her, saw her on social media. She's back swinging again now and hopefully be ready to tee it up in uh, Singapore in a couple of weeks' time. She was supposed to be here this week, but in case you didn't see the news, she got a, a new dog and dog bit her hand. And she ended up having to go to hospital. But uh, thankfully, she seems to be getting... Uh, speedily recovered from that. I'm excited about this drive. I'm interested to see where she's going to hit this, Patty. Arguably the longest player in the field this week, right up there with all of them. We saw Charlie try to take it down the right-hand side, fly it over those palm trees. And That's look at the confidence that she's got to have the driver. She's got a five-stroke lead right now, Tabatanica. Here she is at the ninth. I think this is the play. I think Three Wood brings in five bunkers. Driver only brings in one long left. Hitting it over the two trees on the right hand side. She's gone right at that. That is huge. She might have hit through the group in front. <laughs> She is pumped up right now, as in control as she was in California just over a thousand days ago. She does look like Patty 2.0 right now. Same line for Emily Pedersen. Scampers on through as well. That's another big strike. 
you are yeah. looking at, at two of the world's best in the women's game at hit and driver. Ball speeds of over 150 miles per hour. <laughs> She's giving it the nod. I'm a massive fan <laughs> of the Emily Pedersen when she puts the sunglasses back on. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I like that one. So Esther now, going to try and keep up with them. Yeah, may that be two left. Well, that's how you do it at nine. The final three ball, putting on a stripe show. Well, so far, this uh, Aramco Saudi Ladies International, presented by PIF, has belonged to Paddy Tavatanakit coming towards the uh, halfway stage of this final round, and she is just pushing on. Minami Katsu's had another birdie. Four in the last five holes, seven for the day. The Japanese now in a share of third, alongside Charlie Hull at nine under par. Emily Pedersen now alone in fifth, but it's Patty Tavatanakit at the top, her lead is five. Yuka Sasso bouncing back from a couple of drop shots to move back inside the top 10 at five under par. Steph Kiriaku putting together one of the best rounds of the uh, final day. She's four under for the day and the tournament. And you can see Amy Yang, four over for the round. Georgia Hall out in 39. You watch Paddy Tavatanik get out there, you think it's easy, but when you see players that good struggling. Amy Yang said she was cold on the practice ground this morning. About 22 degrees. Does she know what temperature is in Korea right now? <laughs> she can't wait to get to Thailand next week. She likes it there. No. Well, we mentioned Minami Katsu had got to nine under par. And this is how she did it at the 12th. Great player one as a 15-year-old amateur on the JLPGA Tour. One of the first players in Japanese history to do that. So she's also won twice the Japan Women's Open. And those are majors on her home tour. So she's got game. Hitting a high draw into a front left pin on 13. I think she might make four in a row. Could be one for an internet TV show, which we still haven't watched, but we're going to start doing a bit of research on that. I just need to learn a bit of Japanese first. It's faster than you think on nine. Oh. Scared it, didn't she? Yeah, she, she's had a bit of practice, but she seems to have now mastered chipping around these greens. Patty T has no <laughs> idea how far she's just sent this golf ball. She's looking in the wrong area. You are down the left-hand side that's, and long. That's a pleasant surprise, isn't it? Well, Minami Katsu's uh, doing her best to maybe try and get close, but someone in those last couple of groups to do a katsu style run around this turn here at Riyadh Golf Club. And this for a four for Hull. A we a tidy up and down, no problems there. But she's gonna need that nine of her life if she's gonna catch Patty Tavatanikit. She trails by six, nine holes remaining. Reese Phillips on the back for Esther Henselite, just the caddy. It's a boyfriend and coach as well for the German player. He's English. Yeah. I mean, wind is like this. 
Has 110 flak, 90 front. And that's where you, you're looking to land it around that 100 yard mark. Wind, if anything, is down from the right. Have to go digging for that one. That's come up right and short. Oh, finally, we've discovered the reason why players are being so short. You're missing this fairway. It's only 47% of players have hit this green in regulation all week. Just misjudging the light. Oh, the heaviness of the light. Well, she's uh, only just off the putting surface, but deciding to chip this one, one is saying. Wedge for Pedersen. Yeah, she's played it nicely. What was the what was the uh, the music that Patty Tavertanica was talking about yesterday? She Lewis said it was Capaldi. She's in Lewis Capaldi. He was on earlier. She missed yeah, it. Yeah, maybe they're playing again, knowing that she's coming round. I mean, what a tee shot she's hit here at nine. Probably the best of the day. Three wood into the first part five was pretty useful as well. But this now, come on. I made the tee shot as it as it anyone on the ninth. And it's nice to see a hit and driver well, isn't it? You, know, you mentioned how that's been her Achilles heel. Well last year I think she was second last on the LPGA tour in fairways hit 58%. Katsu on the move four birdies in a row five in the last six holes eight for the day and the japanese player into a share of second place <laughs> you see the cameraman trying to get ready quick enough because chenetti races around the golf course she's now in sixth place seven under par been a front line that had four birdies but it also had two bogeys so she was out in 34 two under for the day and with tabatanica i think this is a golf course that you don't necessarily need to hit the fairways it isn't intimidating off the tee and you mentioned about you know the lack of driving accuracy it hasn't been amazing this week either but no, no one else's has she's about 50 percent for fairways in regulation but you can get away with it on this course because you're hitting into the wasteland or she's hitting it that long it's not a tree line golf course it'll give herself some confidence if she can get over the line she's not going to look at a stat and think oh i only hit 50 percent of the fairways if you go and win a trophy is she so I like the fact that she's coming to this golf course that's going to build some confidence with that club because obviously she hits it miles, but if it's miles the wrong way, that's not ideal. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, the Chevron Championships now moved to Texas, but it was in the Californian desert where she won, and now we are in the Arabian desert where potentially she may win again. Just land this one short of Tabatanica's ball marker, about halfway. Looking good, looking very good from Esther Henselite. Birdie three on the ninth hole. Well, that changes things a little. Just what she needed. Not a spectacular front nine as the last two days when she went out in 31. 33, more than decent, though, from the German. And what a way to finish it. She's chipped in already this week. Shot around a 65 yesterday. Rolled in like a pot. Nice round of applause and, you know, keeping the leader honest. you just got to stay in there. Well, she's within four now, thanks to that. 
you look at her final rounds last year on the LPGA Tour, she had a number of 67, 68s. So she's got that experience. So she is a big threat, but it's all about Paddy Tabatanakit now. You know, she's got a five shot lead. Make that four now, but then has this chance to extend it. This is though, the longest part that she's had for a birdie on this front nine. Outside left. Didn't start it on the line that the ball was aimed at. Slightly open club face through impact there, so it will only be a par. But job done this front nine. No, oh, isn't it just? They've only made three bogeys all week. She's kept one off the card. And two birdies and an eagle. And those par fives on the back nine, look out. Patty T is coming for them. You know, we talk about one player who's on fire, but how about Katsu? She is eight under par for the round. She's not done yet. Wow. 14 is one of those holes, OK, that, that you're going to take par. It's, it plays one of the hard holes on the golf course. Wow, keep an eye on that. Will there be some players that don't like all this noise going on while you're on the green putting for birdies? I think the the change in the song at that time would have distracted me because I, I would have been like, oh, Beyonce. Like the, even when I was commentating, I was thinking, oh, there we go. Yeah, that, that's not ideal, the, the change of song. Uh, it's golf, it's got to be entertaining these days. Got to get more eyeballs on the game. And I think they've got used to it now with the Ramco events because it's a common theme. I'm all right with the music. It's just when it changes to your your song. I I imagine that most of these are pretty big Beyonce fans. So the leaders head to the back nine. Kathy Tabatanik at one ahead after day one, two ahead after day two, leading by three after round three, and now four ahead with nine holes left to play on over Esther Henside and the fast charging Minami Katsu it was a great start from Charlie Hull three birdies in the first five holes but Hull has stalled since then Hall though well that was much needed Second to 11, middle left pin, downwind hole. And you can see the flag fluttering. This has changed 180, the wind, this week. It's now a northerly. This hole was into the wind. They were hitting hybrids in here on Thursday and Friday. Adjustment to do around the golf course that many would have been told back in October. This is a good one to come to. It's an easy course. Well, Patty Tabatanikin, four ahead then of Esther Hensel. I'd be a spring in her step walking to the 10th after that chip in. We can find out she's with Gabby Partington. That's a lovely chip in for Birdie on, on yeah. nine there. Tell me about it there. Um, well, I hit a good drive, almost too good, and it just ran through the fairway. And I had a bit of a bad lie, just tried to get a 50 on the green, didn't really get it, and then chipped in. So I felt like karma came back to me after that lie <laughs> from a drive. Well, you look happy and smiling. You look like you're enjoying yourself. And it's the first time for you here in Riyadh, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, I've been to Jeddah a few times, but first time here. OK. Well, I know you've got Reese on the bag. He's your boyfriend, he's your caddy, and he's your swing coach. Three for the price of one there. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, <laughs> he's doing it all. Um, no, I mean, he's been caddying for a bit over two years now. We've been working together on my swing for about three years and it's, it's working really well. Okay. Well, for a lot of couples, it could be too much time spent together on and off the golf course, but it works for you, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I think we're both pretty easy personalities. I don't really go crazy on the golf course, so yeah. I think that helps. And yeah, we're just enjoying doing the traveling together and have like a travel buddy there all the time. And yeah, it's it's been great. I mentioned boyfriend. It's actually a correction because he is your fiance because you got engaged yeah. just before Christmas, didn't you? Go on, show us the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, zoom in. You don't need to. Um, yeah, it was just before Christmas, back home in Germany, and it definitely was a surprise. But I'm, I'm really happy with everything. Oh, so you didn't have any idea about any of it, no? No, my family knew about it. Some of my friends knew about it, but yeah, I wasn't really expecting it to be honest. But yeah, okay. it's been good. Lovely. And lastly, what's it like planning a wedding on tour? Have you have you looked into that yet? I'm not quite. Not really. Uh, we found out that we apparently need a visa to get married because we're from different countries and because of Brexit. So it's going to be some, some visa research going on and then we can start the planning, but we're not in a rush really. Okay, yeah, get the boring bit out of the way and then you get the white dress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll leave you around. Yeah. Great to Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, paperwork to be done. Paperwork to be done. But uh, it's interesting, they, have, they spend Christmas in Germany in England but apparently the Germans celebrate Christmas on the 24th whereas in the UK we celebrate Christmas on the 25th so they actually fly on Christmas Day morning to be with Reese's parents in England and spend the day before in Germany with Esther's. So a two-day Christmas? Yeah. Two-day Boxing present. Day? I assume so, yeah. This is not the angle for Charlie Hill down the right hand side. The pins on the right Flags on 20. She needs to carry it a minimum of 10 to get over the bunker, landing it on a downslope. There's not a lot of good news going on here. Short left. Need her chipping skills. Yeah, the charge is stalled. I think it's fair to say. I just don't think like the the lies are just really get into the like Henselite said didn't she like I just got a tough lie you can't gouge it out similar there for what Charlie's playing this one sat a lot better for DeRoy trying to cut one in from left to right if you remember when we came on air Charlie Howe had an eagle putt at five she knocked that in she would have been within one shot of the lead now she finds herself uh, at nine under six back of Patty Tavatanakit. The uh, leaders are on the 10th uh, tee. Let's have a look at this hole in closer detail, closer tee of our own Sophie. The 10th hole is all about this bunker down the left-hand side. It's 250 yards to carry it. Now, on the front nine, there's plenty of holes where it's crosswind. On the back nine to start with, it's either into or downwind. If it's downwind, if you're thinking stick or twist, you twist and you try and carry this bunker. But if it's back into the wind, you've got to aim for this corner part of the fairway very, very narrow to hit. It's only about 18 yards wide here, which pushes you across to the rough on the other side. Thick lie, heavy lie, and you've got a bunker short right to carry, which may, meaning controlling the golf ball on the green becomes a lot harder and it does bring those bunkers into play. But stick or twist on this hole, it's all dependent on the wind direction. I think it's fair to say the wind is a little stronger than was forecast. So where is it going today? It's helping. It's this northerly wind helping. If you are going to play to the corner, which it looks like Henselite is doing here, you can't go through that corner because you end up where we saw Charlie Hull. That's why I quite like driver option and just tee it up down the left-hand side, or hit it down the left-hand side. Flying over that bunker that you see there on the right hand side of your screen is 250 yards to fly. Now, so she said it is down breeze. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely on for the next two players. It looks like Tavatanikit's got three wood though. Be still interested to see what line she takes. You saw where Van Dam sort of take it at it down that left side and not get too far away from the green. Looking like she's going over the fountain, so right of that bunker. 
on the string right now. For a player that is hitting, what did you say, 50? 58%. 58%, that is 18 yards wide. Yes. That's threading the needle. She is so in control. It's uh, majestic to watch. Uh, for the language, but it obviously she felt it was a good one. Is that a fair way to find yeah. it out? It's the oh. favourite club in Emily Pedersen's back, that hybrid. It's the one that was so effective at Royal Greens on that final hole, par five. Won at the Saudi sweep. Yeah, won three trophies in two, two weeks in our first ever visit to the kingdom back in 2020. Oh, nearly got another. Under pressure to save her par there, a little bit of work, but Katsu, eight birdies. Remember, the course record is a 61. That was set by Alison Lee, and that's under threat right now by the Japanese player. So another drop shot, frustration. Oh, you can see it clearly from Charlie Hull. And I was mentioning before, you know, she had that putt to get, what, four under par for the day through five holes, get really close to the lead. She'd have spotted Tava Tanik, it's not coming backwards, but she is. That's the frustration, she's close. It's not she's playing bad, she's close to playing well, and that's what's frustrating to yeah, especially after five runner-up finishes last year. Love to get a, a win under a belt early on in the year. Seems unlikely now for Charlie Hull, who drops back to eight under. That is seven adrift of Patty Tavitanikin. A couple of holes left to play for Steph Kiriakou, the Australian. Uh, four under par, as is uh, Alexa Pano, who is uh, a Ladies European Tour rookie this year. She took up membership after her win in Northern Ireland. So she's playing her rookies. I suppose at 19, you're allowed to play your, your rookie season on the LET. Heading for some decent points as well. Leona Maguire, level par today. Had a terrific second round, 64, but that apart not being what she was looking for. 72 to finish for the aforementioned Anne Van Dam. Now Manon De Roy from across the green at the 10th. The one breaker, this one. They're speeding up these greens, aren't they, Kate? Yeah, they are, they're rolling out beautifully. Too far back now for De Roy. Now this is an important part for Katsu. She's eight under the card today, and this is to ensure, yeah, well, by the way she's playing, doesn't look like she's going to miss much. So she's eight under. Remember, the championship record is nine under, set by Alison Lee, and she's got a few holes remaining as well. So she's walking as if she's got the body language. She could walk through a wall right now. Yeah, 11 under, 61, done twice by uh, okay. Alison Lee back in October. Well, I think hence are like by the looks of things, will be a little bit happier with this lie than the one she got in the rough at nine. Played to the corner rather than through the corner. 359 yard par for dog leg left. Wind coming from nine o'clock. We've had the pleasure of watching her career mature. We saw her come out as a teenager on the ladies European tour, knock on the door of victories and then come through in the very last event of the 2019 season to to win in Kenya and win the rankings. And the last few years with Reese's help, her game has, has really gone up a notch or two. Sorry. 
Coming down there. Coming down there. And it should be the little bit right. Good caddy right there. Yeah. Mikey Patterson caddy for Kari Webb. Yes. During her halcyon days. 142 yards flag, aiming 30 feet left of it. Minimum carry, 130 yards to get over that front right bunker. Not happy with that because, as discussed with Mikey, she wanted to be a long way left of it. I think she'll believe she's in the back right bunker, but it has stayed on the grass. So two clubs here. How does it feel? If you look at the head to light takeaway, it used to be quite yeah, almost floppy and quick, whereas now it looks so much more solid. So it was really armsy golf swing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And now there's a lot more of the big muscles working. You can kind of see it's coming more into it now. Change club, going to go up a club because you are hitting back into the wind if you are going left of it. Yeah. I mean, you said here is okay, and here is fine. So, come to that. So, they're taking long left, and they're trying to take the bunker short right out of play, and they're going to play left of the long right one that Emily Pedersen flirted with. Just keep an eye on this takeaway. not where she was going. She was not starting it at that pin. The game plan was left of that. I know Katsu's been on a charge, but you look at the players that came into this final round as the closest contenders to Patty Tavitanikit, and they're all making errors around her, whereas she, again, like at nine, has probably hit the best of the tee shots they have been all day at ten. Hasn't put a foot wrong so far. It's been wonderful to watch. And this looks like it's right at it. <laughs> and it is again, creating so many good opportunities. People will be watching Patty Tavitana, kid, and, and saying, why on earth hasn't she won since the Chevron Championship of 2021? What's been going on? But, I mean, they've got every right to say that. I mean, in terms of the golf game, the driver's not been behaving, and then between the ears, just lost all confidence. Doubt is a very big word in golf. As soon as doubt starts to creep into your game, you can start to second guess yourself. You're out on the golf course for a long time, five hours. It's not a reactionary sport, you've got time to think about it. And that's when that doubt can creep in. There's a lot of frustration out on the golf course right now. There's a few players getting hot under the collar. Yeah, Paddy Tabatanik, not winning since uh, that Chevron Championship, although she was part of the, uh, the Thailand team that won last year at the uh, International Crown. And here she is, four shots ahead of the chasing pack and in with another birdie opportunity whereas Henselite's found that back bunker. The awkward spot there at 10. Round of the day has come from uh, Minami Katsu, which is why she is third on her own. Nicole Brock Estrup was uh, leading the way yesterday until an eight at the 12th. There she is at uh, three under par. She's just made a six at that par five today. So she hasn't had a par there this week. Birdie, eagle, triple, and a bogey. It's a wrong club for Esther Henselite. Flew it over the back of this green. Needs some good skill right now. It's not a huge amount 
of green to play with, but is playing into the breeze. It's not bad. Is, is that when you're playing alongside somebody like Paddy Tavatanaka, who's just cruising around this golf course in imperious fashion, it can make your game look really quite average in comparison. Now, Esther is three under for the day, but she trails by four. She is the closest contender to Patty right now. But this is a classic example Esther's punting for a par, Patty zeroing in on the flag again with another birdie opportunity, putting so much pressure on her challengers. Back into the wind here. Just jammed that one into the back of the ball, didn't she? That flew off. One of the things she's been talking uh, to Thomas Bjorn about is, you know, when she gets into contention, Emily Pedersen, how the, the nerves have affected her. She hasn't been able to see it through over the last couple of years. And today, again, it just is slipping away again from her. Especially on you know, the first hole, you make bogey, the leader makes birdie. Suddenly, you know, that purpose that you might have had stood on the first tee just gets zapped away from you. I mean, you said about the Patty Tabatana kit, why? Where has she been? Well, we spoke about the loss that she had in Bangkok at the ATS. She then went on to miss seven out of eight cuts in 2022. So confidence was, you know, at an all time low there. And last year, the making of cuts, that was a real big stepping stone. And this will be a huge step to winning this Sunday afternoon. Birdie put right to left to get to 16 under par. Dove across the hole. If you talk to her psychologists at Vision 54, Lynn Marriott and Pia Nielsen, they often talk about performance doesn't follow a straight line and it's often said she says that as well she talks about it and you look at great players like Lydia Ko who was the dominant player in the world number one she dropped to outside the top 50 a couple of years ago and has found winning ways what a start she has had it's a very difficult game to stay at the top all the time I know but seven out of eight like if you're, oh, but Eric you're missing done that them and I back. know like you are on the range on a Saturday and Sunday grinding when they're all out playing it you, your confidence just gets sucked out of you more and more. And yeah, you might have won a major, but that feels like a million years ago. And she, you know, I think you look at the likes of a Lilia Vu that has gone through a low patch. I mean, I know the Lydia Ko thing for Rose is a very dramatic demise, but in the in golf, it's it's not. You know, it's like the Jordan Spieth drop. The, the Patty Tavatanikit, you know, I'm sure she questioned if she will ever win again. Whereas I don't think Lydia Ko does that. So yes, another backward uh, step for Emily Pedersen back to where she started today, seven under. And we've seen her on te in tears on the golf course. I think in both Bangkok and in Scotland, we've seen her crying Patty Tavitana get out of the course. Yeah, but I think golf really affected Patty Tavitana. You remember when she made the cut in Scotland? Was it last year or the year before? The year before, yeah. The year before she made a cut and weeped. She was that, like emotionally drained from trying to get over the line just to make a cut. Well, a little tester for par here for Henselite. This, remember, is to stay within four. Well done. Good up and down. Nine has begun and it's a safely negotiated par for Patty Tavatanikit. She's looking control. She's looking relaxed. Jason Hamilton has said there's not a lot he says to her throughout the round. She is in her own world. And 
if she continues to stay in that world on this back nine, she will be the one lifting the trophy come day's end. And what is a very big day pay-wise, 750,000 US dollars goes to the champion. And it's hard to see who's going to really mount that challenge as we've hit the back nine on a Sunday afternoon. So off they go now to the par four 11th. Two hundred and sixty yards finds the bunker on the right hand side, but you are hitting into some form of upslope here. That's why you might see players edging down that left. I want to make sure they avoid the sand right with it being downwind. Found uh, some of the thick grass down that left hand side for uh, Henselite. This is what she's been doing quite a lot this week that closed stance in a rehearsal. She can fire her hips quite well too quickly, and then the club head gets outside her body, and then she can hit a pull or miss it right. New driver in the uh, bag this season, new driver, new shaft. Seems to be working all right so far. to get down oh you lucky girl <laughs> sometimes it's your week isn't it that was out of bounds wasn't it that potentially with a big bounce the palm tree. Yeah. That, that bush is out of bounds yeah. and that was firing left well I was setting up that she can hit a left one and I suppose there you go oh, you need a little bit of luck along the way don't you she has certainly found it there. Skirts past the bunker into position A for Pedersen. Inside the top 10, Alice Hewson currently three under par, this four a par. You finish inside the top 10 this week, you're earning over $100,000. Catch up again with uh, Minami Katsu, just a par at 15. So the course record is safe. The best round of the week is not. Fiona requires eight under par is in threat. Trying to see what I'm saying. Miss Birdie opportunity for the tie player. Up at 13. Nobody from the chasing pack at the moment able to get close to Patty Tavatanaka, who's had a big break at 11. Just 20 minutes from the center of Riyadh here, capital, largest city in the Arabian Peninsula. And this golf course itself, well, first opened back in the 1980s, actually. It was a, a sand golf course. The, the greens were oil brown, so they weren't green at all. But uh, in its current state, first looked like this really from 2005. But in the last 18 months, it's been given a, a bit of a makeover. It is. It's a, it's a wonderful golf course, even how much it's come on since October. Let's have a look at this again. I said the miss can be left. So this is left going left. There's out of bounds. 
down there on 11. And it hits the curb, doesn't it? Oh, no, the tree. It hits the palm tree. Yeah. That's why I was thinking it was close to yeah. going out of bounds. And then it kicks back. And you can see half of the golf ball. So she wasn't quite sure where she hit it on nine. She wasn't quite sure where she's hit it on 11. Both times she will be absolutely delighted. And you kind of think, I mean, she can't get ahead of herself yet, but it is, it's going to be my week, isn't it, when that sort of thing happens? Although she won't be that aware, I suppose, that it did hit the tree from where she was. You need some luck to win golf tournaments. And Patty Tavatanikit may have just got that down on the 11th from hitting that palm tree. And you do, you think, oh, maybe the golfing gods are with me. Oh, these are gonna... Not against me, like so often. Yeah, I mean, what did we have? Oh, was it day two, Yukasaso's tee shot at nine? They or get stuck in the stuck tree. Stuck up the tree, and then you get something like this happen to Patty Tavatanikit. Sasso, the uh, US Open champion of 2021, is inside the top 10 at five under. And, sorry, Richard, and now you know, she's like, well, which wedge is it? Is it my pitching wedge or is it my 50 degree? Instead of reloading off a tee, playing three, she is now, well, which wedge? Down this left-hand side, it, it's not the angle, really, for a front left pin downwind coming over a bunker, landing on a down slope. So she did not play away from the flag on 10 and found the bunker, but she will have to play away from this one to the right and maybe long of it. think she'll celebrate with an ice cream remember what she said she's she's cut out all these desserts fried food new diet she says she misses ice cream more than anything else I think she should if, if it goes to plan you don't win very often so it needs to be celebrated 50 degree wedge for Patty T into 11 must avoid the bunker short left Well, sometimes you've got to make the most of your luck. And that is what she has just done big time there. So all the players coming out of the rough haven't got the right strike. They've released downwind. That's landing on a downslope. And then she just stops it within, what, two feet? It's outrageous. Pedersen from the fairway, can she get the same amount of stop? A hundred and six yards for Pedersen. No, she can't. No. Well, it was a poor tee shot. She got a big break, Paddy Tavitanikit, but it's uh, what you do after that, that that matters as well. Not many players can do this in women's golf. Downwind from the rough, off a downslope, landing on a downslope and stopping it that quickly. Lucky off the tee, but there was nothing lucky about that. It was all about that beautiful strike. Yeah, this is a player who in uh, 2021 was uh, a major champion, the winner of the Rolex Annika Major Award, Rookie of the Year, seventh on the money list on the LPGA Tour, winner at the Chevron, or the a a Inspiration, as it was known back then, plus a couple of other top tens in majors as well. Forstelin from the side of the 13th, second to a front left pin. She's 
going to be making her debut on the LPGA Tour soon. Hoping to get some starts in March. Having gained status at Q Series. This is up on the uh, 11th green. Not the way you want to start your, your back nine, having to play away from a flag on 10 and 11, except in this 40 foot pot for birdie for Henselite, especially with the leader in tight. We'll move off that back bunker from right to left. It's tidy. No bogeys on the scorecard today for Henselite. Three birdies. This is Yuka Sasso, who we were talking about, the one that had the ball stuck up the tree on Friday. First start of 2024, so it's been a, a decent week. has not been able to get this final round started. She needs some fire. She's even par, and everybody on the front page is under par on the Sunday. Just been the two birdies, but two drop shots for the Dane. So seven under par, and very quickly, eight shots off the pace, a winner of this inaugural championship back in 2020. It's still a strong showing. And when you look at her rankings, you see that she's out outside of the top 100 on the Rolex rankings. It's surprising to see with the game that she has. Yeah, she has a game for the uh, top 20, doesn't she? Uh, be interesting to see. She's talked about the, uh, the role Thomas Bjorn has been playing in her game in recent months. I'm sure Thomas has <laughs> been watching this final round with interest, but uh, just a par here for Pedersen. And somehow, given that tee shot, a golden chance for another birdie for Patty Tavatanaki. A ball that should have gone out of bounds. It bounced in from the palm tree and then hit the most audacious wedge to here. A left edge birdie pot. Stretching array in Riyadh. Patty Tavatanakit gets a break, makes the most of it, and now leads by five. And I know the rest of the chasing pack don't know, but for her playing partners, that will hurt most. Yeah, they're walking off this screen going, do you think that was gone? I thought that was out of bounds. And suddenly, like you say, she's gone and got another one on them. And, you, you know, one wayward tee shot and you drop a shot, suddenly you might start thinking, but that wayward tee shot meant she's picked up a shot. It'll mean she'll forget about it probably on the next hole. Well, look what happened to Nicole Brock Estrup yesterday. Winner in Mallorca and in Switzerland last year, first inning. Charlie Hull. It's been the easiest hole all week, this par five. And there's a good chance of a four there and a birdie for the world number eight. But too far back now, seven shots adrift. The 
tennis player, Minami Katsu, needs another round, needs more time because she is electric today. Eight under par on this Sunday. Her job isn't done yet. It's here she is at the 16th, couple more holes to come. Par five, Tabatanakit, driver. Went back into the players' faces. Jumping. How many times have you captured that video this week, Sophie? I know you like to look at the players' swings. That's one worth recording. Yeah, it certainly is. It's, it's how much... I re There's something about, like, players' recoil in the follow-through. I think that's what's got me. Emily Pedersen has, has it. Charlie Hull and Patty Tavitanik. It's that extra kind of couple of mile an hour they seem to put on when they do that recoil. Bunker down the left, 230 to carry. That shouldn't be a problem. The other one comes in at 260 on the right-hand side. Went after that one, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she's a tall athletic figure, Esther Henslight. Super slim, she can make any outfit look good. Again, I don't think I'll be joining in on that conversation. <laughs> Pedersen, 12T. Let's see if we'll get the Emily Pedersen recoil here. is feeling a deflation for someone like Emily Pedersen, but there are some big world ranking, even more important, big Solheim Cup points to play for over this back nine. Yeah, back to back years for the Solheim Cup after winning in Spain last year. On American soil this year, she would love to be part of that action. Oh, that's a shame, Alex Vosling. You know, talking to Alexi Thompson this week and her focus is very much on the Solheim Cup. And this year it has a military theme in the States, and she is very into the military she was talking about. So that even more so than playing for United States in the Olympics. Oh, there's, is a Lexi mi there's a military theme. Yep, that's I'm not what sure she I like the sounds of that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough focus to focus on, on the golf, I think, would probably be better. What about camel oh, talk? We're back to our favorite subject outside of the golf, the cabals. Are you? I was going to give you some camel information, but we haven't got time because Gabby's <laughs> called up. Were you Casasso? <laughs> Hugo, I've got to say, lovely drive there, and I hear that you model your swing after Rory McElroy. McElroy. It makes sense because you hit it such a long way, don't you? Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't think so because Georgia just uh, drove me like 20 yards on the uh, ten, uh, tenth hole. I mean, 11th hole. So, um, but yeah, I think I drove that really good. Yeah, well, you outdrove her on this one. I saw it with my own eyes there. Now, I read as well that in lockdown, in COVID times, you were you were looking at Rory McIlroy's videos, weren't you, and watching for about an hour a day? Yeah, yeah, since I was young, um, since I was like 13, 14, Rory was winning a lot of tournaments. And I think not just me, everyone loved Rory at the time. So, and yeah, I still do love Rory and watch him play. Okay, and what actually got you into golf in the first place? Who was your biggest inspiration behind it? Was it something you watched or a player? Um, my dad was playing golf, um, and I've watched uh, Paula Creamer won her uh, U.S. Open uh, in 2000. Was it 11, 10, 11? Uh, yeah, um, and I was watching TV with my dad, and I told dad I wanted to win that trophy too, and that's how I started. Okay. Then you went on to win the U.S. Open. How much did your life change after that? Um, personally, it didn't really change, but obviously. Uh, on the golf course, it changed a lot. You know, at first year, everyone was calling me uh, champ and stuff, not by my name. Um, but it was a good experience, and I think it grows my game. Also, I grow as a person as well. Yeah, and I, I saw that you uh, your picture got put on stamps. Manny Pacquiao was reaching out to you. You got a lot of attention. Did you enjoy that side of things? Oh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, I've never had that uh, experience in my whole life, so... And I think it will be once in a lifetime uh, experience to have that stamp and, you know, having Manny or 
you know, famous athletes in the world reaching out. Uh, it was a, it was just a amazing feeling in the world. Well, you're one of those people now there, so people will be pleased to hear you reaching out to them. Uh, I don't know, <laughs> maybe not too much. Well, I'll leave you to your next shot. Great to chat to Thank you. you. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, half Philippine, half uh, Japanese, which is why Manny Pacquiao, one of the finest boxers in the Philippines, has uh, been reaching out. She can speak five languages. Can you, Kasaso? Uh, well, that's a good birdie part for Ash Buhai. And for some of you might be wondering, well, why did she switch allegiance from the Philippines to Japan? Well, she's a citizen of both countries, but under Japanese nationality law, you can only be Japanese, and so she decided to go with her father's, her mother's nationality. So now represents Japan, but did win two gold medals at the Asian Games. So I'm not sure how the Filipino community feel about that allegiance switch. Okay, not too bad for Hensonite there. Wasn't her best. Saw the lovely chip at this par five onto the green from Charlie Holt. Hopefully, a birdie, yep. Maybe make her feel a little bit better. You know, hearing from uh, Yuka Sasso, it's hard, isn't it, when you're watching players to know about their personalities, but apparently she is one of the. Uh, the funny players out there. Apparently, Patty Tabatanica said once that she was having trouble breathing out on the golf course because Yuka was making her laugh so much, although it's probably a good job she's not playing with her today, then. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot to focus on. Here she is at 12. Oh, by the way she's playing, she's having a good time with Yuka there or not. Playing for position now on this 12th hole, par five, easiest hole all week. Well, we love seeing course records being threatened, but this is now for par for Katsu. Oh, and that is the first drop shot of the day, which is a real shame because the 61, there was a potential that Alison Lee set back in November. There was a chance for this player, the Japanese star Minamu Katsu, to potentially eclipse that, but that's now not going to happen. Running out of holes, still a very good Sunday. Best part of 260 yards to the front edge for Emily Pedersen here. This one is left. Needs to get down. You can see she was just trying to lean on that, see how far she, how close she could get it to the green, and that skipped through the cart path onto the desert. So that first drop takes her back into a share of third alongside Charlie Hull. Fifth edition of this event. Second time it's uh, for a prize fund of $5 million when Georgia Hall won this event. In the end of 2022, she won 135,000. 750 for the champion here today, which is looking ever likely to be Patty Tavitanikit. You, you never know. I mean, we saw at 11. Could have gone the other way for her. We're looking very much in command, really from the get-go. I mean, she birdied the first four holes on Thursday. None of those birdies were outside of nine feet. She didn't have time to practice her putting before she went out because it was so early in the morning. She teed off at five to seven. But 66 in 30 mile an hour winds is going to give you some confidence at the start of the year. Yeah, and it's very easy for us to say that's going to be one of the rounds of the year because on the Ladies European Tour, we're only into our second week. But you spoke to players, the likes of Ash Buhai, that have been on tour for, you know, I don't want to say actually, Ash, a long time. And... Um, she said that was some of the worst weather she's ever played in, some of the strongest winds, because there was three, four mile, uh, three, four club wind, but it was from the left and from the right. It was a terrible crosswind. Yeah, a lot calmer over the weekend in terms of those wind speeds. And third shot now into the par five. Just 
don't go long of this one. Solid centre of the green. Not going to threaten the hole with a, a bird. He's going to be a long range birdie for Patty Tavakanatet, but she hasn't put a foot wrong so far. Been on a few charges this week. Mr. Henselite, she needs a big move down this closing stretch if she's going to make this competitive. There is a backstop beyond this flag. It's on 24. If you fly it long of it, it can run up and come back to it. Nearly, wasn't it? Can you imagine if that was coming from the fairway where Tavatanica came from, that would have zipped back. But Henselite isn't finding fairways at the moment. She's missed 9, 10, 11, and you could say the same on 12 with a layup, and she's clearly not happy with coming out of the rough, as she said to Gabby. Pedersen will be able to get some spin with this. First drop shot of the day on 16. Has to flirt with the front bunker if she wants to get this one close. Flag's only on 10 yards. Just stays above the ground. Just a fun watch, isn't she, Charlie Hart? She really is. There is something compelling about her. She moves the needle in women's golf. Wish I could drop kick it that far. <laughs> You'd have to spend a bit more time in the gym. She's there morning and night. This is the uh, second of 31 events on the uh, Ladies European Tour calendar. We've already been in Africa, now in the Middle East. We're going to be uh, heading back to Africa next week to uh, Morocco for the Lala Merriam Cup next week. A lot of the players, though, up at the top of the leaderboard, like Esther Henselite, will be uh, moving with you, Sophie, off to uh, Pattaya in Thailand. Yeah, myself and Kate will be we're flying out there, and Patty Tavatanaka, she's going to be heading home. Uh, if she's got a trophy in her hand, that's going to be a good homecoming for her. There's Three weeks in a row in Asia. Quick one, this for Henselite. She'll be pitching onto the downslope. That didn't look pretty. No, it's a, similar to the Emily Pedersen strokes gain stats that we've been talking about. Around the green is the Achilles heel of the German. Yeah, she's improved that putting. Uh, the help of David Orr. Now this putting process is clinical. Look how her eyes just don't leave the, between the ball and the cup. She is so involved with the process here. She makes sure the line on the ball is correct. Look, she's not leaving the hole. Back and forth, very, very target orientated, making sure this start line is correct. And what's also good about it is once she's over the golf ball, it's quick. It's, it's almost reactive when she's over the golf ball, and that's what she's been talking about being more athletic, which means thinking in the right moment, which is called the think box, and then as soon as you step into the play box, it's full commitment and just let the club flow. You don't want to hang around in the play box too long.
hardest thing for Hunarit now, isn't it, is not not to get ahead of yourself. I mean, everything is going just perfectly to plan. Pedersen on a similar line, so maybe he would have learned from that part. Then again, maybe not. Pedersen, four on the par for this hole so far this week, and now he's got three feet left for par. So the 12th hole has been good to the day. Not today, though, not what she needed to pick up a shot. Good save, it really was. I think I mean, that resave, great save. I mean, it wasn't the best of chips, but putting beautifully. Just got to hang in there and, and just see whether there's any fragility at all. It, it doesn't look like it's coming from Patty Tavatanakit, but you just never know. The uh, world number 70, the 24 year old from Thailand, has been at the summit since Thursday morning. And it looks like she's going to remain there all the way through to su Sunday evening. It's a commanding five-shot lead in Saudi for Patty. It's amazing how uh, Carlotta Siganda just just sneaking into that top ten. Never really been in the mix all week, but. Three unanswered birdies today. There she is, tied seventh. Charlie looking to turn this one in from right to left into 13. Well, only 30% of the field have hit this fairway, so almost the pressure is off Patty Tabatanik at trying to get her average higher. It's because she hit across this fairway from right to left. Wind into from the left. find that front left flag yes it has missed the fairway but you can see you're not playing down 13 you're playing across it this is at 17 with Minami Katsu had a couple of top tens on the LPJ tour and what was her rookie year 242 yards carries the bunker on the left. That's a, a big carry for these players. This one in particular in this three ball. Well, That's as good as it gets. This time. That is as good as it gets. She has certainly added some length to her game, Esther Henselite. Walked the practice round with Emily Pedersen and Mikey Patterson, and they were saying about how far left you can hit it off 13. You can hit it not the first TV tower that you see on the right-hand side with the number 13. It's actually more towards this one, to the right of that bunker. That's what she'll be able to see off the tee, that TV screen. That is left, but how far? So the leaders uh, 
the final group off the 13th tee in this final round of the Aramco Saudi Ladies International presented by PIF where it's uh, still Patty Tavitanikit dominating. Five shot lead over Esther Henselite and a two shot gap to the rest. Last week it was between Shannon Tan and Alessandra Finale where the Italian is caught up with Gabby. Alessandra, it wasn't long ago in October where you were part of the winning team, weren't you? Um, tell me a little bit about that, because you must have fond memories of being back here in Riyadh. Yeah, it was actually very nice to come back here. And I don't know, this place is just like very good vibes for me. So I've been enjoying that this week. It's playing a lot different in October, but it's very good to be here. Yeah, and I know you're a popular girl on tour. I see you smiling and laughing around the golf course and also always congratulating your opponents after they drive too. So maybe that was the secret formula of winning the team event, being a team player. Yeah, that's probably it. I, I mean, uh, honestly, this year I'm just trying to be happy and enjoy it as much as I can. And today I'm playing with two major champions. So for me, it's such a big thing. I always dreamed about this, so I'm just trying to enjoy everything I, possible I can so okay. well you're here in your own right and it's so nice for you to hear for you to say that as well have you have you learned anything by playing with them well I feel like they're just trying to go very like calm and shot by shot and it's probably what I'm trying to do this year as well as I said before I'm just like doing it very like calm and being like okay like take it shot by shot it's yeah. gonna come if it's not coming now it's gonna come later but yeah sure it will and now you're playing with two major champions and you've got your boyfriend on the bag what a combination yeah exactly it's like perfect day for golf honestly <laughs> my game is not quite there but i still have a couple of holes to make some birdies and see what happens yeah okay you were saying you want to be a little bit more relaxed on the golf course yeah. and and off it as well in the off season i see you went skiing that's a hobby of yours isn't it yeah i did it was lovely honestly it didn't go for like 15 years so oh, wow. yeah it was my first time in 15 years again but it was like the best week ever yeah was it bambi on ice there's no injuries here yeah no no injuries <laughs> two uh ski lessons but the rest was fine yeah okay and lastly being from italy yourself i know you've uh, your favorite food is pizza your favorite city is rome but how great was it to have the Ryder cup on home soil last year Oh, it was so good. Best experience ever. First uh, Ryder Cup for me. So it was like, yeah, lovely to be there, honestly. Best, best week ever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I was there too. So it was amazing, yeah. wasn't it? Well, I'll leave you to the rest of your Thank round. you. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you. It's a home club, isn't it, Marco Simone? Doesn't she have an apartment? Like, yeah. On the golf course? Yes, yeah, she does, yeah. Well, we saw that beautiful shot in by Charlie Hall on 13. Can she convert this from right to left? Sends it high. How long do you think before it gets to her? You know, the five runner up finishes last year. Here's another opportunity they can slip. How patient can she remain? I think what you've said today, maybe we're seeing that annoyance of not converting how well she's playing into, into picking up a trophy. Yeah, first time we've really seen that visible kind of anger come out from. Charlie Hull, you can understand why. It's another controlled, beautiful shot from Patty Tavatanakit. It's on repeat. And we've spoken all week about the length of this golf course, how it's added another 400 yards. She has wedging all the time it's because of how far she can hit that tee ball if you're hitting it 300 yards off the tee i mean her average this week is just shy of that it's 288 yards you are going to be inside 140 yards continuously and you can just wedge it close which is what Henselite is hoping to do as well but tabatanica has set a marker here follow that Whatsoever. 70 yards left for Emily Pedersen.
three good shots. Yeah, still plenty for Pedersen to uh, fight for over this closing stretch. You never say never. We've seen enough golf tournaments for uh, <laughs> to be too smart to call it at this stage, but it's been exhibition golf from Patty Tavertanik. A three-shot lead coming into this final round. And she, she birdied the first hole. She missed a couple of good opportunities at the second and third. But again, you're seeing her, Sophie, here come out of the rough. And it's just every time so controlled. She's wedging it around a big golf course. That was her shot into the second. And you wondered, you know, this length of putt, if she can get this, she can really push on, and she left it short. Oh, well, in the final group, you can be tentative. Bearing in mind her playing partners, in Esther Henselight and Emily Pedersen, they did birdie this hole. Yeah, and at this point, at the start of the round, they were getting a little closer to her. They were trying, trying to make inroads. And here she was on that front line. She opened her account with a birdie, Patty. But then this was another putt that she left in the jaws. But it was this hole, the fifth. Have a look at this three-wood to the par five. Yeah, if there was a statement to made, she made it here. Men mortals just can't do this. A three-wood dances it around the flag, sets up an eagle putt. And she's missed a couple, but she's not hit bad putts. She stayed patient. This one from right to left. A statement move from Patty Tabatanakit. Yeah, and that took the lead to four shots. And then two shot at the par three eighth. You don't get much closer to a hole in one than this without it going in. All class from Patty. A tap in two to really put her foot down. She went out in a 32, and it's been a birdie on the back nine as well, because here she was at the 11th hole. Par at 10. Yeah, she got a big break, didn't she, off the palm tree to find that position, but then... This has been the best club in her back, hasn't it? This wedge. I mean, from the thick stuff, down the left-hand side, downwind. Thank you very much. Three birdies, two eagles. Five yeah. shot lead. And she's just done it again, hasn't she? Into this hole of 13. With her closest competitor sliding that birdie put by, she will have a chance to stretch that lead even further. Well, Alison Lee won by eight here. The way it's looking, Panty Tavatanakit might be heading for a similar margin of victory. and chasing for the places at the moment alone in sixth well it's been a magical day on the golf course for Minami Katsu she has come down to earth in the last couple of holes with her first drop shot of the day, but is seven under for the round. And that chase is down. Ladies and gentlemen, match number 15, two-time LPGA Well, she's got that left to equal the best round of the week. World number 27, from Ireland, Leona Maguire. It's that player who had a 64, Leona Maguire. Now. Well, here we go. Is it time? for another Patty T birdie. Yes, it is. The lead just keeps getting bigger. A superlative performance. Five under for the day, 17 under for the tournament, <laughs> and six ahead. Jason, everybody else. Now Richard, Jason Hamilton yesterday was asking me if I could help him find some Taylor Swift tickets when they come to Singapore in a couple of weeks for the HSBC Women's World Championship. 
I think if, um, if she's missed 90% and he's missed 10%, he might be able to afford them. There must be an apt Taylor Swift song for the way she's playing right now. <laughs> I know if anyone knows, Sophie Good. will. Style. She's got that for sure. Not the place to be on 13, was it? And Salite and Pedersen just barely touching their pots, and both of them going the way that they didn't think it would. Both of them peeling off to the right. So a par for Emily Pedersen. And a par for Esther Henselite. Three under the card for the day, six back. She is sucking the life out of these two right now, Patty Tabatanikin. Shake her off now. Charlie Hull on 14. He's going to try and push a 7 iron into this wind. In front of the green. That wind is maybe stronger than she thought. Exhibition of front running it's been from Patty Tavatanik at, at Riyadh Golf Club in this Aramco Saudi Ladies International. 17 under par for the tournament. Four birdies and an eagle to double her overnight advantage. Georgia Hall trying to uh, battle back, had a couple of birdies on the back nine, just outside the top 10 right now. Been a quiet start to the year by uh, Lynn Grant, although I think it's fair to say she put the clubs away for a, a little while. I'm sure we'll see her back in some style. A couple of Swedes here at the bottom of the page. Caroline Hedwell, one of those Solheim Cup stars in last season's Players, Player of the Year on the NET. Annika Stars in there, both finished at one over par. Six shots the lead, five holes to play. Day for Minami Katsu. Oh, that's a shame. This is for a round of 65 for Katsu. And it was all looking so exciting. Eight under through 13 holes. And then the last five holes, she actually played one over. You could tell by the look on her face. She well, that pop there might have just cost her about $100,000, Kate. Not sure whether she's going to be uh, interested in counting the cash, but it might have cost her that much. Three groups on the 14th hole. Yes, Yoko Sasso's group. On a par she's, three. Yeah, look, Charlie Hall is just walking up on the green there as if to say, hurry up. Can we play through? I've never heard a par three being a call-up hole before. Must have been some ruling or something going on, which is why they asked the players to, uh, in the group, 
Mr. Hine to uh, tee off. Yuka Sasso playing with uh, Georgia Hall and Alessandra Finale, whereas Charlie Hull in the penultimate three ball with Manon DeRoy and Amy Yang. I suppose Amy Yang really has been one of the uh, surprises of the day that she's three over par for the, the round four drop shots in the first six holes. All the adrenaline disappears, doesn't it? You, you're in the mix, starting the day. You make a fast start. Yeah, well, Charlie started the day four back of the lead. And as the world number eight and highest ranked player in the final few groups, you really thought there was going to be you know, more of a charge. But it's hard, hard to find that magic sometimes in the final on a Sunday afternoon especially when Paddy Tavatanaga has done such a brilliant job of just shutting everybody out. She's six under par for the round today, Patty. And she's making it look very easy out there. I think this is the time where you wanted to have been in the final group for Charlie Hull. If you look at the two, uh, two playing partners, they're both struggling today. If she could have teed it up alongside Patty Tavatanaga, then you, you've got her, you can look her in the eye, you, you, you know, you can really see what's happening and you can hang on to her coattails. She'd have put some pressure on her early. We mentioned how close she got towards her, but Patty Tavatanik never saw any of that unbelievable goal. And maybe, you know, just how you can hang on to coattails, you can get pulled back down by them. And, and Charlie maybe has done by these two in the, in the second part of her round. It's, it's hard to keep pushing by yourself. You kind of want to almost gang up on a leader as a, a teammates as such in this three ball and it's not been the case. It's been like an anchor really for Charlie Hall. Yeah, Finale and, and Yang both over par for the round. So they're calling them up as well. I don't think there's quite ten there. There's ten yards in there. Five off is really spot on. Hey? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, they're standing back to admire the leader. I, I'm, I'm a little baffled by that one, Sophie. No idea. Well, they're suggesting that there's not quite a 10 yards of wind up there, maybe eight yards, but we've seen this. There is, a, there is at least a full club up there to have a tannic at playing back of the tee box, 161, one, playing 171. One. Solid. No doubt about that. I don't think I've seen this before. There on the right is a view from the player's perspective. There's not been many birdies here this week, and I think it's because they're wary of landing it on top, just in case it kind of shoots through. So many players have just been in that Patty Tavatanic at spot, and then it leaves themselves a lengthy birdie pot. Yeah, it's been the third hardest hole of the week, and it's a par three. Take you see how shiny it is on the top tier there? Players are just reluctant to land it on there. A rueful smile. So is everybody playing for second place? Or could there be a late twist? You would think it's unlikely. Tavatanica has been so good. fashion. Pedersen's trying to move out of first gear. Yeah. 
best parts. Emily Pedersen has lost her patience now as well. That was a long way out. Players have made some moves early, not being able to see it through. Remember, Shanati, when I say it, is going great guns through the front nine. Three birdies in the first four holes. Well, this is another player thought might produce some magic on the final day. She won the CME Group Tour Championship a few months ago, Amy Yang, back $2 million in the process. It's world number 16, so a quality player. Her final round also hasn't eventuated. You can see there, three under. Maybe that sums it up. Two houses in Florida, one at Bay Hill, one at Orange Tree. Practices out of Bay Hill and putts at Orange Tree. That's a nice little setup, isn't it? Sounds a long par four to me, though. <laughs> yeah, that win uh, in Florida, her first on American soil. Now, DeRoy. Third last week, third last year in this event, which was played at Royal Greens. And I think we're seeing a little bit of what you're talking about, that the mood of this group, DeRoy and Yang struggling, Charlie Hull, you can see just, you know... She, she wants to get in, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, she wants to get on with it, and she's having to watch them. We do talk about this put to get into the final group, and. That is so important on this Sunday afternoon. Charlie's looking behind her at Patty Tabatanakit. She can't see what's going on. Well, if she caught a glimpse of the leaderboard, she'll know she's eight adrift. And remember, she did have a putt to get within one in the early stages of this final round when she had that eagle putt at five. for any language you may have picked up. But I think what she's talking about is how long it's all taking. She can't get any rhythm going. Exactly. I mean, we can see it. She can feel it. Yeah. You can understand her pent-up frustration there. Pedersen also unhappy with things here at 14. Needs to run. He needs to do something. That was heavy from Pedersen. It's not an easy shot. And it's unsettling for this final group to walk onto a tee box and see someone on the tee, then playing through. You know, we're all going, oh, what's going on here? They're thinking exactly the same as well. Knowing that you're going to go to the 15th hole, which is a par five, so you're just going to be waiting again. Yeah, I, I'm sure like there must be a reason for it, but I, I'm, I'm struggling to find the reasons in my head. But I think that's why Emily Pedersen hit such a poor shot into, I mean, it, it can't have been much more than a seven iron that she's hitting in off a tee. To, to finish that short and right, there's got to be more to it. I think it's fair to say it's all gone a little ragged out on the golf course at the moment, but one player who just has maintained the high standards is Patty Tavitanikit. It can be quick at the top towards this hole. You, you're putting uphill, but because it's so shiny, you can actually play it like it's a reasonably flat putt because the shine really picks up the pace on it.
Well, you were speaking earlier this week about how Esther Henselite's one of the uh, contenders for Suzanne Pedersen's Solheim Cup team this year. And this would be a, even if it's not a win, a, a very nice start. It may be achieving that goal. Esther Henselite needs to get on Suzanne Pedersen's radar. She's averaging nearly four birdies around on the LPGA. That's good stats. But she needs, you know, a standout performance to say, hey, look at me. Because we've only had a year in between Solheim Cups, and that was a winning Solheim Cup team. So you're looking at maybe two spots free maximum. Yeah, it's hard to see much change in that European team, but we shall see. Tabatanakit, part of the winning international crown Thailand team. A year ago. We'll talk about this a lot next week, but it's um, it's fascinating to see how many more Thai players are on tour. If you go back 10, 12 years ago, just as the emergence of the Jutanagan sisters, but you look now and you see, we're talking about Paddy Tavatanaka owning the top of the leaderboard, but Chanate Wanasayan. Hajari and Anaruka, other players, well, Chani Michai, you know, other players that well, are Well, look here. at the Ladies' European Tour. Two of the last, was it? A tie at Four winners of the Ladies' European Tour rankings have been tied. Trishak Chinglab yeah. in 2023 and a tie at in 2021. Oh. Yeah, but look at the reaction. It would have been a lot worse if it hadn't gone in. She, could, <laughs> she just about raised the hand there. Not in the mood. Hundred and thirty seven yards left for Buhai into eighty. Oh, it was three under the card for the day, nearly five under there. Well, that would have been a spectacular finish from the former women's open champion. Some great young talent in the field this uh, week. Some teenage stars like uh, Alexa Pano and Kiara Neuer, all racked up in the uh, top 25. And uh, also uh, amongst the contingent in that top 25 is uh, Lucy Lee, the American, has uh, had a fair few birdies out there today. She's with Gabby. Lucy, we wanted to chat to you today, so we managed to catch you outside school recording there. But it is your first time in Riyadh. How have you found it? Yeah, it's nice. Um, I'm a big fan of Mediterranean food, so that was really good. But yeah, overall, it's been a good experience. Uh, pretty windy out here, which I actually like, so it's been good. Yeah, how have you adapted to the change of the conditions? Because it's been pretty like, up and down, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's been windy kind of consistently. Uh, the first day was the windiest, so I feel like I picked up some strokes that day shooting even. But, um, yeah, it's been the weather's been good for the most part. Yeah, we've seen you on our screen since you qualified for the US Open at age 11. I know that probably gets shared and talked about you with the ice cream. Um, but I've got to talk about your style. It's very flamboyant and colourful. Is that something you take pride in? Yes, I do. I really like my colour. Um, I don't know if I would call it flamboyant, but I guess it depends on <laughs> who you are. Um, <laughs> I just like uh, monochromatic and, um, yeah, I just like my colours. Yeah. And we've got to go back to when you were 11, because it's mad to think you're only 21 now, right? So all the way back there when you were 11, talk to me, how much has changed in that time and how have you dealt with the spotlight from such a young age? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy how long ago that was, honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... I feel like I've I've grown up a lot, and at the same time, I feel like I haven't. <laughs> you know, I'm just, last year, I had kind of a tough year, and I was just thinking, like, I kind of want to bring back kind of that um, attitude and joy I had playing golf when I was younger. So that was my goal this year, just to not take things too seriously. And, you know, I've been, I uh, feel like I've gotten up to a pretty good start. Yeah, you felt better after that change of that mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and another sport I read that you'd accomplished as well, it was diving from the age of four. <laughs> Tell me a bit about that, gosh. Yeah, um, I don't know if I I really like like played it as a sport but I was I always loved water as a kid and I did gymnastics and diving is you know no they're not the same thing but they're kind of similar I've always loved water so I kind of did that and then um, 
they were like, you're, I couldn't swim that well, but I was pretty good at diving. So they were like, you're too, a little too young for this. So you should probably come back in a few years. But uh, at that point I was already playing golf. So <laughs> Tell everyone how old you were. Uh, when I started playing? Yeah, no, when you were diving. Oh, that was when I was four or five, yeah. <laughs> well, all the talent is on the golf course for sure. So it's great to chat with you today. And uh, thanks for coming to Riyadh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, Lucy Lee currently in her share of 14th, finished fourth at the LPGA Drive on Championship a few weeks back. So Alice Houston finishing up uh, her day. And it's been another good week. Third in Kenya. And at the moment tied for seventh. She'll be uh, right up there in the upper echelons of the rankings on the Ladies European Tour through our first two events. Three rounds of 71 and a 69 and a hug with our caddy. That's a job well done. A player I'd like to play with in the Pro-Am if I got the chance, I like her style. Down to earth, very approachable, as is this player, Charlie Hull. Here she is at 15. She's down the right-hand side from the tee box. Hit an iron, making sure that she's 70 yards short of this green to take the water and the bunkers out of play. It's wind direction back into the players' faces be layups for not only Charlie but playing partner man on the Roy also man and Roy had a solid finish here last year finishing third it's going to be another decent showing for the player from Belgium for a top 20 finish. I mean, she is slipping down the leaderboard today. But as I say, this is the richest event outside of the majors. Five million dollars on the line. And it looks like this player is going to take the lion's share of it. Is there a hole to scare her coming in here? There shouldn't be. There shouldn't be. We've seen Anne Van Dam hit it left off this tee. Out of bounds left is a long way left. This is a wide golf course. Not to make a big number. To drop shots, yes, but not to make a big number. Wind from 11 o'clock here. 300 yards as you run out. have a tanniket. So if you were saying any danger really going a mile left and she wasn't going anywhere near that. Anytime she's looked at all like producing something that might cause trouble, she got away with it. Well, yeah, sorry, I think on 11 she was trying to hit like a big pull off that right bunker, whereas there she hit a fade as if to say, well, left's not going to be in play right now. So that was a, a sensible strategy. Of the equation done, no problem there. For Henselite, what does the year hold for the German? Getting better each year. Now, very much an established player on the LPGA Tour. Frozen rope for Emily Pedersen. Yeah, 
getting closer to home. The lead six. Four I really holes to it, go. But I was, Time for a chat as they wait the their way yeah, down this par the five fifteenth. We're gonna work our way down, down it as well, yeah. courtesy of Sophie. Yeah. I like it, but I'm super easy with clubs. That's so good. The 15th hole is a par five at 542 yards and there's two separate landing zones. Off the tee, you don't want to hit it any further than 290 yards to keep yourself short of the wasteland that cuts across this fairway. Next up, the second landing area, which is your layup area. There's water and wasteland that cross this fairway at around 50 yards short of the green. So you want to lay back of that. Within 60 is your maximum. So you've got to lay up off the tee, then you have to lay up with your second. You've got to be really disciplined on this because people just want to go for par fives. They want to switch off and hit it as hard as they can, but you need to stay in position. And even with that lay up, you've got to keep it down the left hand side mostly because it opens up this green that sits diagonally across you. You've got to be slightly more disciplined on this hole. Only the longer hitters will have a sniff at it in two. You've got two lots of layups. Charlie Hull has laid up nicely, so here she is with her third. Back pin, getting a bit of zip on it as well. Could it be a boo high birdie at the last? So a round of uh, 69 from Ash Buhai. Should be good enough for a, a top 10 there at five under par. There she is. Alongside Carlotta Saganda, who's coming down that last hole. Alice Houston matching Buhai with that 69, but they're all playing for places. Can't crown her yet, but Patty Tavatanagat looking mighty good. So there she was at the start of the day. Got off to a poor start. Been uh, another solid week for Lexi Furstening. 77 on day one, so only just outside the top 10. Nimbio Kim, uh, who has uh, had a number of near misses in her rookie season last year on the uh, Korean tour. Disappointing days, they see Pei Yun Chen, Olivia Cowan. Both three over for the day. Leona Maguire in with a round of uh, 74. So Friday apart, it was uh, not the best of weeks for the Irish woman, but shouldn't forget that 64 she shot on Friday. here for Emily Pedersen for her layup on this 15th hole wants to just keep it down the left hand side so you can play up this green So a player who's all by herself in second place. Here is Esther Hensline. 11 under, hasn't made a birdie on the back nine. Went out in 33. If you're Hensline now, is it is it about consolidating that second place? Do, do you give up or, or know that victory is really 
beyond you. I think victory is beyond her, but you know, the, you're not giving up, are you? I suppose you wanted to finish your round as best as you can, and as I'm sure, just like Kate said, you know, level par back nine, that'll be something that they've highlighted, and we'll just try and pick up a couple of shots. But second is very good. It's been the uh, Patty Tavatanaka show from the word go in Riyadh this week. Up on the green, Charlie Hull with a decent birdie look. A quick one, breaking from right to left on her. Like it couldn't really find the hole on the front nine, missed a couple of short putts, and that really halted her momentum, her charge up the leaderboard. There's a good one to bag there, too far back now. Likes a second spot, though, doesn't she? Yeah, <laughs> good point. Yeah, if you go back to last year, you know, in her rookie year, she had five runner up finishes as well on the ladies' European tour. I remember that rookie, yeah, yeah. It was, she lost in playoffs to Carlotta Zaganda. And, I mean, it was, everyone would have said it will happen at some point. Here is Zaganda's second into 18. So she found the sand on the left hand side. She was the player that finished second to uh, Alison Lee here in October. There's a, there's a flamboyancy about her, isn't there? But. I've heard her do uh, like podcasts and chat. She, she doesn't really like to be recognised. She's a bit of an introvert, even though, you know, you look at her, she's, you know, there's a coolness about her. She's a flamboyancy about the way she plays the game. She reminds me a lot of the way she plays the game of Alison Lee, who won here last year. Both of them went to UCLA, mm -hmm. hit the ball a similar type of distance, and obviously, she's had the major win but their careers are similar in that respect of maybe not winning as much as you'd have thought thinks about what club to hit. It's going to be Esther Henslight to deal the first blow into the heart of 15. 110 yards for Henselight. This pin is only five off the back edge. It needs to be bold to get it all the way back there. Link this one right. Sensational. She thought it was going to end up worse than that. It's a decent result. Well, this has been a good club for her today. Very nearly hold out on the eighth with a wedge. she needs to do. The margin at the top is six shots. Six shot buffer over Henselite. A ten shot buffer over this player, Emily Pedersen. 99 yards for Emily Pedersen. The green that sits from back to front to control the spin. Kisses the flag stick. That was unlucky there. Yeah, 
that's uh, unfortunately for Emily Pedersen. Well, we've talked about the uh, the mental fragility and uh, the emotions that Paddy Tavatanik has been through since her win at the Chevron Championship in 2021. This was only 18 months ago, and this is at the Women's Scottish Open of uh, 2022. She made the cut. Now, she'd missed the cut at Evian and at the US Women's Open, amongst a few other events prior to that. And that's how much it meant for her just to be playing the weekend. She shot 76, then she bogeyed her opening hole of the day. So she's five over par and then shoots 66. So 76, 66, the turnaround. That man there right by her side. She's got to be thinking, here we go again, another missed cut. You know, so much hopes have been dashed. And then to dig deep to shoot that. But she did go on a miss the cuts the following weeks as well. A run of seven missed cuts in eight events. You watch the talent that she's got and you think, how on earth is she missing the cut every week given that talent? But it's not often you see the emotions let out from someone like that just for making a cut. I don't think many sports you have the roller coaster of emotion so much that you do in golf because you're out there for so long isn't it right Kate you are in your head for so long and you aren't reactive in golf you've got to make the ball move you're thinking over it I, I always think that you know with with football everything comes at you so fast and you can trust your instincts but at golf you've got hours to second guess those instincts most definitely but I can think of other players I mean, Aria Jatanagan, after reaching world number one and winning a major, missed nine cuts in a row, 2017, bounced back to win again. So we talk about this short-term memory that you need in golf. It's a real asset, you know, and when you hear players being interviewed, oh, I stayed in the present one shot at a time, I play boring golf, we hate hearing it, but that's how you play your best. And so you can't dwell on the past, you've got to focus, get excited about the next shot, as the great Nancy Lopez said. It's very hard to do, because it is a sport where you're out there for a very, very long time and a chance to think about it. You're right, Sophie, and uh, that's why so many of these players have sports psychologists, and Patty Tavatanaket is certainly one player who's really had a lot of help on the psychology side of things. Or you hear of stories where players have gone into the locker room afterwards and, you know, let their emotions out. You don't normally see it in the middle of a golf tournament on a Friday afternoon <laughs> in Scotland, do you, really? Because, you know, when you're winning, you're playing well. When you're scraping a cut, you're not playing well, you know. So it, it, it actually, it takes more stress out of you. But this has been stress-free for Patty Tavatanaki. We're looking at another birdie put on 15. Yeah, 18 months on. <laughs> if there are any tears to come, it won't be of relief or hurt. It will be of joy. Another hole ticked off. But it's a funny old game. When you think about some of the great players, let's go back 10 years and look at Yanni Seng, who was the most dominant player on the planet, youngest ma player to win five majors before the age of 23. And then you look, she's fallen off the cliff. It is a very difficult game to stay on the very top. Because that's how US Open champion hasn't won since. And last year, certainly on the L LPGA Tour, 23 different winners. You had so many good players all trying to get to the top of the game. So you've got to be on your top on top form throughout the course of the year. And that's hard to do with such depth of talent that we're seeing in this last couple of years. Well, Henselite's just got to keep pushing, trying to see what can be. Just to uh, cut the lead by one. She's made it 12 under, and that certainly keeps her in terms of second place with the edge. shots back though with three to play if you're watching golf on television you're seeing the players that are playing well and you're seeing the top of the leaderboard you're not seeing those hovering around the cut so tears happen a lot 
in a, an, on a Friday afternoon at golf. It's just that as television, we don't get to see him so much. Well, and to that point, you know, if we do look at a player like Aero Jatanagan, she missed 10 consecutive cuts a year later, wins three times at a major and reaches world number two. So, you know, maybe that's the inspiration that these players need when they are down. Power on the last for Carlotta Saganda, a round of 70. Consistent, considering she's had a shoulder injury. Want to say to be uh, 17 remains eight under one of the rare breed to come through Monday qualifying goes on to win the tournament she did that in September well there's a player who missed nine consecutive cuts last year and then one on the old PGA tour gives you all hope doesn't it wherever you're watching around the world the next round could be the best of your life Charlie Hull has spoken openly about not liking the approach shot to this green. She has been from the right-hand side on occasions this week, which isn't the angle. Talk about playing across the fairway on 13, you do that on 16, but from middle of the fairway, you're playing more up this green, it's downwind. Another back pin on 16. a similar spot for her there that bunker really does cut in and it changes the shape of this green and, and she has struggled to find a back pin all week on this hole final group back on the tee here at 16. Off the back of her birdie and tonight with the honor Nineteen birdies now the last three days for Esther. Downwind from the right. Three bunkers down the right hand side. There is water down the left, but that's not in play. See that 91 feet, she does hit the golf ball high. That one, 290 yards down the middle. Driver in hand. She's been so good with this club all day long. Making the game look very easy. Look at that. Thing of beauty. It's been the hardest hole all week, the 16th. If you look at the stats, there's a ravine that cuts across the green short. Not a factor for these players. Follow the leader, isn't it, there? Yeah, but it was just looking at the, the height of the ball flight. 61 feet there for Emily Pedersen, whereas Esther Henslight was 90-plus. 
Well, she's trying to keep up with Patty. Get it scamper along the fairway. Now have a look at this putt here for Charlie Hull. And look where she's aiming. Well, right of the flag, there's a slope. Needed to hit it higher. Difficult hole, it's 16. Lydia Coe's won it twice, Georgia Hall and Emily Pedersen, the other names on that trophy. And surely it's going to be Patty Tabatanakut next. Paha Gokorn Tabatanakut, if we're going to give her a full Thai name. I'm sure the engraver's hoping it's only Patty that has to go on there. There is Georgia Hall, one of the uh, former champions, couple over today back at three under par. Paul Arito uh, was within one of the lead after the first day, still inside the top 20. And after her disappointments yesterday, it's a 74 to conclude for the one-time leader, Nicole brock -Estra. to do for Charlie Hull here to uh, avoid a drop shot. Had a couple of bogeys already this week on 16, as Charlie Hull openly spoke about not liking the approach shot to this green. She missed it again. Stood over this six foot par putt. Three over par for the 16th hole this week for Charlie Hull. She falls to nine under par. Tied now with Katsu. see this round coming today. No, it's surprising, isn't it, for somebody who's so consistent. And for a player, a winner last year on tour. That's a funny old game, golf, isn't it? What it can do to you. I had her chances, Amy Yang, this week, but wrong direction today. Five over par on the Sunday in Riyadh. It was out for a good number of months last year with the elbow injury that totally stopped her from playing and then came back and came back with a vengeance. All three players safely down this 16th fairway. From the right hand side, that bunker that been talking about you have to carry it a good 16 yards onto the green around 140 yards left for Emily Pedersen it needs to go 135 minimum which will carry the downslope which runs off that bunker wind down you can do from that angle from that right hand side of the fairway it gives you nothing everything's playing against you this is 
where a good caddy comes in, a caddy that can keep pumping up your tyres when it's proven to be a lacklustre final round. So keep on having that self-belief. That's what golfers need if they're going to get to the top of this game. Good mindset, confidence, belief in their ability. Mr. Henselite has that. And you can see why with good iron shots like that. That was all over it. And there, Sophie, once again, it's just proving hard to hold to attack this pin that has proven to be the most difficult hold throughout the course of the week. And this could be a great opportunity to just see how good Patty Tavatanikat's ball striking is with her approach into 16. Because she's held pins like on 11, which I didn't think was possible. He does it again. Come inside 130 yards. That 50 degree wedge will be worn out today, but all for good <laughs> stuff. Should be sleeping with it tonight. <laughs> to the par 317, Yuka Sasso. Left to right. Nice. Nice. Sinks it. Long range there from Sasso, a 2 one seventeen. Bolts up to six under. Purple on the last for Alexandra Forsterling. That's a round of one under par time winner on the ladies European tour last year yeah which uh, as a rookie last year couldn't play last year here could she so making her Ramco Saudi ladies international debut just outside the top 10 oh, and also outside the top 10 is Manon de Roy it has been a horrible day for the player from Belgium four over par five bogeys just the one highlight being the birdie on the sixth hole so Manon de Roy can she finish with a birdie one assigned second comes up shy. Yeah. Another one whose spark just disappeared the longer this day went on. Did uh, one assigned. Stood a decent day being put together, three under. Most of the work done in the uh, early stages. And, and that's why this round's to be applauded. You've you got a, a decent lead to head into the final round. She sucked the life out of the tension here, hasn't she, Patty Tavatanik? It birdied the first, eagled the fifth, and no one's really been able to get anywhere near her. The mindset for any leader will be, let's shoot the low round of the day. Then everything takes care of itself. And at present, it's only Katsu that's, that's beaten her, so she's six under par. And, and you're right, everybody around her, you know, they've thrown some punches at her, but she's just come back with even more. I mean, it was an uppercut, that eagle putt that she held early on in the front nine. Long range here for Pedersen. It's been, it's been textbook front running from Patty Tabatanike, and that was the question mark that we had at the end of play last night, at the beginning of play today, for three days, she has looked poised. Yeah, and, and you know, whether she could handle the emotion, whether mentally she was strong enough, she would have answered a lot of questions of herself today, never mind what, you know, what we're suggesting. So Mili is going to be a, a rookie this year on the LPGA Tour. Nearly made an incident impact. She was in that final group with Nelly Corder on uh, Saturday at the Drive-On Championship. Henselite is now three clear of third. Five back of first. This one from left to right. Straighten up towards the end. You 
know, I mentioned the uh, the drive on championship. I mean, that was a crazy finish, wasn't it? The Lydia Ko, Nelly Corder, and other drama. Whereas, you know, some weeks you get it like that, and some weeks you get finales like this, where one player is just, I mean, just three bogeys all week. One of them's actually come at the 16th, and one of them's come at 17. But they're a free so far today, and a chance for another birdie for Tamatanakin. Left early, then comes back from left to right at the end. Another for good measure, up to 18 under par. In cruise control. I, I wonder when she's going to break out in a smile, because I think she's just, <laughs> let's stay focused, let's stay focused, because I would be beaming. She doesn't have much of a chat with Jason. Did ask them at the beginning. She stays in her own lane. Tunnel vision, that's for sure. <coughs> Nine iron here for Charlie Hall into 17. <coughs> Sublime. She's got all the shots, hasn't she, Charlie Hall? <laughs> I mean, Emily Pedersen into this final round, playing with the leader. She's 11 back of her now. And she's level par for the day. Chadetti, one I say. Can the team finish with a birdie? Well, it was a nice pace on it. Got a big week to look forward to next week in her home country of Thailand. Nickname Proud, isn't she? Yeah, they'll have a like, nickname in Thailand, Proud. Is, got uh, money, we've got Proud. Got May, Apple. What's uh, it's Patty's nickname? Patty. <laughs> Patty okay. T, isn't it? Yep. I think it is. Called Patty by her teammates at UCLA, Papa and Corn, her Thai name now, hence the like misses. So the lead has uh, just got larger. Seven shots clear now for Patty Tavatanaka with just a couple of holes left to play. Hence the like still with that drop shot in command of second at minus 11, two ahead of Minami Katz, although there is a birdie putt to come from Charlie Howe at 17. And they haven't pushed the tee up at 18, have they? They've kept it back all week. It was a drivable par four back in October. Miss Reed there on the last for Lee. Yeah, player finished second at Q Series back in uh, the latter part of last year to her LPGA Tour card. Well, this to get within one of second spot. A minimal movement from left to right. That was more than we both thought. That one swiped across the face. You know, Charlie will be frustrated, but in the end, when the leader starts with a, a three-shot lead and is seven under for the day, I mean, there's very little even Charlie Hull at her very best would have been able to do about this. So I want to say it finishes with a round of 69, eight under par, good enough at the moment for solo fifth, which is, uh, just to remind you, worth $180,000. Young for par. Well hold. 
I think you can say a lot about that comment about the Charlie Hall and what she could have done. It was the same in November, wasn't it, with Alison Lee? It didn't really matter what anyone was going to throw at her. It was, it was never going to to beat her. Maybe she'll look back at the opening round, I think, was it 74 that she yeah. shot in the opening day? And, and Alison, Alison Lee, not Alison Lee. And uh, Patty Tavertanik, it shoots 66. You're already eight back then. Yeah, and, and there was no sign of Patty hitting reverse gear. I don't know. I think with Charlie, she can almost take comfort from a golf course that, she, you know, she's clearly hasn't quite got to grips with the grass and the lies. And I'd have really gone there. Yeah, you know I mean? as always, so whenever Charlie Hull plays on the Ladies European Tour, she's up there and she competes. She doesn't just turn up, does she? Just doing the right thing. Take the bunker out of play. Take the plug ball out of play. Middle of the green. Sammy Lee finishes with a, a round of 70. A couple of birdies late on. to take into her rookie LPGA Tour season. 153 yards this. You need a minimum of 143, but it is downwind. So that's the club you want. You want your 143 club. Excellent shot there. in the final group in uh, Northern Ireland. Ended up losing in that playoff that involved uh, Gabs Cowley and the champion on her 19th birthday, Alexa Pano. She wasn't far away in Shanghai as well on the LPGA Tour. Missed now by just a shot from the, uh, what was ended up being a, a playoff won by Angel Yin. seen the next level for from Esther Henslight in her ball striking this week. Georgia Hall's second shot into the 18th, not the final day she would have wanted. Middle left pin. Just bird is 17, and maybe another one coming up at 18. Back on that tee is Charlie Hull. It was a bit of a crazy off season for her, wasn't it? it? Wasn't maybe the best prep for the start of the new campaign. She got COVID, having played in the Grant Thornton, so that was before Christmas, and had an upset stomach over Christmas, which was turned into salmonella poisoning. So turned up for the first event on the LPGA Tour only a day before it started came seventh but Charlie you know never want to shy away from golf I mean if the if the day ends in a Y Charlie's playing golf and through all of that she still worked hard she's now back in the gym Kate Davey down at Precision Golf and enjoying that but you'd, you would maybe say she's a month behind what she would like to be because of what happened through that off season I mean Charlie doesn't tend to put the clubs away like most players well normally I'll hedge my bets but I'm, I'm going to put my neck on the block that trophy heading to the hands it seems of Patty Tavertanikit another solid iron hit into the par 3 17th it's an extremely commanding seven-shot advantage for the Thai player. It's 
Sasso's birdie put will come off the bunker here from left to right. Hold a good one on 17. Not quite there on 18. Seven major champions in the field, one at the top of the leaderboard, two in this group, Georgia Hall and Yuka Sasso. You know, we talk about the depth of talent on, you know, in women's golf right now. As we watch Paddy Tavatanaket here try and make another birdie. It's quick, nice one. drift on by a little bit a few shots to play with not many people were talking about Patty Tavatanakid at the start of 2024 were they really no because there are so many other players to talk about I mean she's 70th in the world and I feel like there's so many players like Patty Tavatanakid that you say she's won one major hasn't won much since or hasn't won in a while in terms of like a, a, a Charlie Hull for instance there's so many names. Luca Sasso, who we're just watching as well. So many names to throw into the mix. The depth is amazing, but I want somebody to win multiple times, which is why I think it was so good last year that Lilia Vu did win multiple times and got those two majors. And we know this one breaks hard from left to right, hence the light. Looks like she's got that read. Brilliant bounce back from the German good for that second place finish here this week which brings not any much gold in terms of dollars but much in terms of Solheim cut points as well that's why she's smiling here is Georgia Hall on that final hole from left to right like the Sasso pot Three to complete her week in Saudi for Hall. Pedersen tap in. Uh, it's played in all of the uh, Aramco events in Saudi. This is the ninth one. She's just had her worst finish, 12th place. And we thought Emily Pedersen likes Saudi. Yeah. It's incredible that this is the ninth one now, isn't it? You know, with the Aramco Team Series events and this Aramco Saudi Ladies International. The 10th will be at the end of the year with the ATS in Jeddah the most important event on the Ladies European Tour schedule, these Aramco ones. Yeah, blemish free so far today. A little bit of a test here. And uh, a little bit of a blemish. Pity. It doesn't matter in terms of uh, where the trophy's going, but Nowhere really. Three putt. Seventeenth green has caught so many players out. It's something that you maybe need to write on the book that it's quicker than any other one out there. So she'll take a five-shot lead down 18. I think she'd have taken that at the start of the day. for some and on the whole it's been fairly peaceful for Patty Tavatanik because Sasso here finishing up and that's the top 10 for Sasso a round of 71 started with two bogeys in her first four holes but bounced back currently in a tie for seventh spot yeah like the uh, the champion elect one of the major champions of 2021 
Charlie, pin high on the 18th. Eighteenth hole playing downwind today. 385 yards. This wind has switched 180 degrees over the week. The first two days it was back into the players' faces. Fairway wood here. Taking it down the right half, looking to not run through the fairway. He can run through the fairway at 260 yards. That'll set up a wedge into the final hole, if you can do that. Off the back of that birdie on 17, Henselite has the honour. She knows with that job is done in terms of uh, second place if she's been keeping an, uh, an eye on the leaderboard. Emily Pedersen was talking to her around afterwards yesterday that she wouldn't look at the boards, but Mikey uh, Caddy would tell her if there was anything she needed to know. I wonder if Patty Tabatanatik's been aware of how dominant her lead has been all day, really. I mean, I would think if I was seven under par with two holes to play for the day, I'd expect there to be um, a bit of distance there, especially you the two closest so. playing partners. Oh, your two closest playing partners, sorry. Three wood for Patty T. Wants to be on the same line as what Emily Pedersen did towards the the White House as such in the distance. That's worked out just fine for Patty Tavitanica. She can enjoy the walk up 18. What a performance ever since Thursday morning. It's 1,050 days exactly since she jumped into Poppy's Pond as a major champion. She's waited a while for win number two in her professional career. It's coming very shortly. She leads by five. I miss the jump into Poppy's Pond, don't you? Yeah. yeah. It's a shame that Major's move, really, in my personal opinion. Birdie on the last for Amy Yang, finally. She was at five over par until that one went in for the day. Round of 76 for Amy. Let's see what Charlie can do. Birdie on the 18th. Not quite like the week, really. But much to take from these four days in Rio. A nearly week for Charlie Hull. A round of 70 that promised so much. Tied third at nine under par. So much good stuff in there. Have to take the positives moving on to Asia. Yeah, disappointing uh, weekend, really. It was this 18th green yesterday where things started to slip away, and that's a 76 for Man and DeRoy. Just inside the top 20, but... Not quite like the 63 she shot a year ago at Royal Greens to, to finish third. Has dominated this golf course off the tee. Averaging 
nearly 290 yards. Patty Tavatanica has demolished this 18th hole. Right, she's just, demolished the field, really. I mean, a three wood that carries 270, that's always going to help you. It'll just be a wedge again into 18. This golf course has been stretched out another 400 yards to try and stop players hitting wedging everywhere. Well, nobody told Patty Tavatanica because her power off the tee, like you said, has just taken this place and the field apart. Tonight also in good position down this 18th hole. Black today, 17 on and seven from the left. And with the wind down from the left, everything pushes you away from that left pin, the slope also. See the difference between where her ball finishes and Patty Tavatanica. There's nearly 50 yards between them. through the back for Henselite, but no problems there. Level par for her day, Emily Pedersen. On the middle of 18, better angle here. She always scares left pins, does Pedersen. Excellent shot. You know, like, like Patty Tavitanica, she had a three-shot lead, didn't she, going into the final round of the Annika? Do you think she learns anything watching what Tavitanica does today and, and how to see it through like that? I mean, this is just... It has been a show. I think you, it's hard to learn when you're in that position. It's easy to learn watching on. Inside 100 yards for Tavitanica. Just the way it should be. One more, just for show. What a performance. From the very first morning, she has put her hands on the trophy. And that's how you do it in style to end the week. Patty T, the T is for terrific. My goodness. This is what we've all hoped to see from Patty Tavatanikit. When she won the Chevron in 2021, we thought this is it, the floodgates are going to open. A star is born. She has just been unreal today, just like she was back when she won that major championship. You know, it seems ages away for her and for everybody watching it. She's so many people's favourite player. I know she's one of yours just for how well she won that major championship. And we've finally seen it, haven't we? You know, you've spoken about that swagger. Yeah. The flamboyance, the game, it's just everything is there. And weeks like that in California desert, weeks like this in the Arabian des desert, you just wonder what on earth was going on in between. But I think she's... She's grown up, she's matured mentally. Maybe her golf game's matured a little bit as well since then. 
And she's got to have thought, was that a fluke? W will I ever do that again? And we've, we've spoke about the times that it's been bad or when she has been in position and it's really not gone to plan. And today, I mean, I think it's gone better than to plan, hasn't oh it? Oh, my goodness. She couldn't have dreamt it better than that. Just to remind you, she was the first rookie since Julie Inkster in 1984 to, to win the Chevron Championship. It was only her 22nd LPGA Tour start. She was the Rookie of the Year. The Rolex Annika Major Award winner. She had top tens at other majors as well. The world was at her feet and then everything started to slide away. But she's called herself Patty 2.0, hasn't she? Well, Patty 2.0 looks as good as Patty number one. GUR towards the back of this 18th green. The hospitality has been up for months. Remember the Aramco team series was here in November and then the Asian tour came a few weeks later. It doesn't get a lot of sun towards the back of 18. That's why Henselite needs to take some relief. Great video of footage before of Patty T just turning away from the entire crowd and looking out down the 18th in her own thoughts. She's dropped to her knees also on that 18th green. I wonder if it's all just hitting her right now. So a free drop for Henselite from the back of this green. Has a comfort of a three-shot lead over second spot, does Henselite, five back of Tafetanica, so it really does not matter how this ball finishes. It's just about the pride of wanting to get up and down and not drop a shot. Yeah, she shot the round of the day yesterday, uh, a 65. One would assume Tafetanica's going to knock that in, coming up, and she'll shoot the round of the day today, a 65, having led by three coming into this final round. to get this to land as softly as she can because it is on a down slope the landing position of this pitch nicely done well we've talked about how uh, the emotions have hit her the golf course before. I wonder if they're hitting her again in uh, Riyadh this Sunday afternoon. Emily Pedersen, like everyone else, has been left in her wake. This outside chance to finish under par for the round today for the Dane. to be for the first time winner of this wonderful event, Emily Pedersen. Just trying not to stand in Patty's line there. But, uh, keen to get out of the way, I'm sure. Not to be for Emily Pedersen, another real talent. Just a slow day for Emily. Seven under par, she'll finish sixth overall. Keep this one outside left.
been an up and down finish, hasn't it? Birdie, bogey, birdie, bogey. But at 11 under par, she is going to finish second. Had Patty T in her sights, didn't she? She birdied two of the first four holes, did Henselite. And then the eagle from this player on the fifth, that put pay to Henselite, really, and everybody else in the field. to finish loud and clear and with tears on the 18th green Patty Tavatanakit is back tears of joy this time for Patty Tavatanakit she's done it she is back in the winner's circle in some style unbelievable golf on a Sunday joint best round of the day at minus seven when you have a three-shot lead. Well, there's dominance, and there's what Patty Tavatanakit has done because she started the week with four straight birdies and just did not let up from there. Okay. Don't be sorry. Well done, Pat. You're amazing. Well deserved. You're amazing. That was nice from Esther Henselite's caddy. Well, that's uh, lovely scenes, isn't it? The emotions uh, flooding out after a peerless display of ball striking from Patty Tavitanakit, the winner of the Aramco Saudi Ladies International. Let's hear from our champion. She's with Kate. Patty, we can clearly see how emotional this victory is for you. Your last win was as a major champion in 2021. You've been patient, and I can see just how emotional it's been over that roller coaster time. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long time since I've, you know, played this good. But um, it's very emotional. I'm very emotional right now, with um, how I overcome that and just, you know, looking back, it was just one day at a time keep working hard I worked really hard to get here um, to play this solid all week uh, I just want to thank my team um, all the coaches the trainers back home I really appreciate them thanks to Jason for sticking around this long um, but I'm just uh, I'm so grateful for the people I have around me in my life without them I wouldn't be here today um, I'm just uh, I'm soaking it all in right now it's uh, it's incredible just being here in Saudi and was I was able to do that. It's, it's uh, unreal. You're literally soaking in the victory because you could see so many friends came out to congratulate you. They knew how much you've been through over the past few years. But my goodness me, you made it look easy out there. How good were you today? Um, yeah, I came to play. Um, it was a little bit more relaxing today, but I knew I still had to face myself out there. I just told myself to keep paddling. Um, just try to make as many birdies as I can out there, and uh, it worked out great today. You not only made birdies, you threw in quite brilliantly an exceptional eagle as well. How that three would into five, that certainly, um, you know, quelled any chases. Uh, you really didn't give anybody else a chance today. Uh, well, Esther played really well today. So I, I think a lot of girls out here are really, really good golfers and I have a lot of respect for them. So I knew I had to go out there and play good golf. And so so I did. Um, that was a five win, not a three win. Okay. <laughs> Even better with a five win. To think that at the beginning of the year, you've been very disciplined in your approach and you said you've cut out sugar and fried food. Now, certainly, you've got to be treating yourself tonight. How will you celebrate? No, I feel like I'm really, I feel really good with myself right now. Um, so I think I'll just uh, continue to do that as long as I can, <laughs> at least. Well, this is the best start that you want for 2024. You've talked about Paddy 2.0. What are you now looking forward to with this newfound confidence that you have in your game? Um, if anything, I feel like I've grown so much over the past couple of years, um, just as a person off and on the course as well. So I'm just going to continue to grow and learn. And uh, that's all you could do in life. <laughs> well, you have been simply sensational. Wire to wire winner. Congratulations. So Absolutely much. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there's discipline for you. Not even an ice cream to celebrate. A round of applause. Much deserved. You know, uh, 
a seven shot win in the end. Thank you, ladies. From, I mean, at the start, you know, she missed a couple of opportunities to stretch the lead, but it was ever since that, was it, the five, which she said, in, in, into five to make the eagle. Once that happened, that was the statement that said, you're not getting near me today. She just so composed and controlled throughout the four days. You look for a settler, don't you? One shot that just eases you into a round. You hope that you don't start with a bogey, but when you get an eagle on the fifth hole, and we know, we've seen the results, but we don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes there. And I think it was really evident of what she gave there to Kate about just how much this means to her. Golf is a hard game and she has been through the mill as Patty Tabatanikit, but she's come back on top with a round of 65. Yeah, amazing performance, really was as dominant as you can be. The Aramco Saudi Ladies International Champion of 2024 is Patty Tabatanikit. Yeah, and it's one of those days where there will be some disappointment with some final round performances from, from others, but there's no one going to think, well, if only I had... <laughs> no, no, it wouldn't have mattered. The 66 at the beginning of the week was, is, will, will be one of the rounds of the year, without doubt, in conditions that were just horrible. It was so windy out there. But to keep going, I mean, she was leading by one, then two, then three after day three. It's now seven. I mean, come on. There's just nothing you can do about that. Everybody was playing for second place today, and that is because of how sublime Patty Tavatanik it was. Yeah, when I mean, you've got players like Lynn Grant, who are fully 18 shots behind, it uh, gives you an idea of how good she has been. Since her win at the uh, Chevron Championship, she's only had six top tens on the LPGA Tour. So it's not like she's had many opportunities. She did, you know, we saw the one at the uh, at the Aramco Team Series in Bangkok, and that fritted away over the uh, front nine, and you know, in in the final round, she was in a couple of top five positions in majors last year. Was unable to to see them through. So that this is a big hurdle she has jumped this week in Saudi. It is because it started with trying to make cuts. We saw how much it meant to her when she made the cut at the Scottish in. 2022 but the, the game just wasn't there to be sustainable and to win golf tournaments you need four solid rounds in a row and that's just not happened at all from Patty Tavatankit so it is it's a big step yes we're on the ladies European tour but the players around her play on the LPGA and to get a win so early in the year I mean who knows let's hope this does free her up we saw last time she won it, it went the other way but you learn so you learn so much more from losing. Yeah, it, I mean, the champion last year was Lydia Ko. She was world number one at the time, uh, and it didn't quite pan out 2023 the way we thought it would, having watched her that day. But yeah, Paddy Tavatanikit. I mean, you can she can bottle that up. It. I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but she has everything at her disposal, doesn't she, in terms of. Uh, the potential in her game. Well, this Aramco Saudi Ladies International started the uh, final round with uh, Patty Tavatanikit holding a uh, three shot lead with 18 holes to play. And uh, they did get a little close to her, but. She stayed in front throughout. She birded the first hole, which is always a good start when you've got the lead. This on the second, her third into the par five. And just came up a little shy on a couple of these putts uh, early, and that was right in the jaws from Patty Tavatanik. But I mean, you birdied the first. Okay, you miss out for the birdie at the second, no problems. 
but her playing partners, they did birdie the second, so Henselite got back to within three. And then when you do have the lead, you can be a bit tentative, I suppose, over putts. And we saw this again on three, had the line, lacked the pace. Needed something, didn't she? Something that says, here we go, a what? sign that I'm going to win it. Or something like this? Five wood for Patty Tabitanica across water, desert. Now, this par five is 525 yards. Sends it into the stratosphere, has it landing softly. Sets up a right to left eagle try. Well, the shot in was magnificent. Deserving of an eagle, and it got what it deserved. And suddenly she was four ahead now. And it was hers to lose. But with this club in her hand, that just wasn't happening. 122 yards, a wedge. Nearly holes it, just kicks it in for a birdie. So she goes out in four under par. And she got a break, a big break here at 11. We haven't seen the tee shot, but she hit... Well, she was going out of bounds and hit a palm tree and ricocheted back to that point. And then these are the type of shots that others can't do. Out with the rough, downwind, on a downslope, and she stops it within a foot. So she'd birdie 11. The control she had over these wedges. I mean, not just today, but particularly today, her proximity to the hole was so good. If you watch her on the driving range for the first 20 minutes of her warm-up this week, every single day she is practicing those pitching numbers. She would birdie the 13th. This was a birdie on 16th, one of the hardest holes on the golf course. And from here, she's freewheeling. Yeah, she did 3 pounds 17, but it's a round that deserved to end in style. 82 yards. She hits at 81. No one shooting better than 65. Patty Tavatanica. All the focus and then the emotions come out. And she talks about sticking with me. Friends do, coaches do, Caddy Jason did. That's because she's a really nice person and good things come to good people. And first win since 2021. No jump into Poppy's Pond, but uh, Walter to celebrate there for Patty Tavitanikit, who at last is going to get her hands on another trophy. Well, welcome to the prize presentation, and I'm delighted to welcome our presentation party. On our right, we have the CEO of Golf Saudi, Noah Ali Reza. To his immediate right, we have the Golf Saudi board member, Ahmed Al Subay, and then from Aramco, the Vice President of Public Affairs, Mr. Hussein Han Bazaza, and our champion on the left, who has been simply brilliant throughout the course of the week, a wire to wire victory, and to cap it off, a 65 on Sunday to reach 18 under par and win by seven. Seven shots, simply brilliant. Can we please ask Mr. Hambazaza to present the magnificent trophy to our winner for the 2024 Aramco Saudi Ladies International to Patty Tavatanikit? <laughs> It's lovely to see the smile back on the face of Patty Tavatanikit. What a wonderful start to 2024 for her. Confirmation of a seven shot victory with that closing 65. She's changed a bit in terms of uh, her diet, her mental attitude since the end of last year. No sugar, no desserts, no fried food. Maybe that's the recipe, Sophie. No fun by the sound of it. <laughs> no ice cream even. <laughs> Have no fun and then you can win. No, I would say this is more disciplined. Disciplined approach from Patty Tabatanikit. You could see it throughout the week, how headstrong she was. There didn't look a sign of weakness there. And if there was, she hid it incredibly well. 
Yeah, six birdies in an eagle in that final round. Just showing off at this stage. 265 yard three wood, a flick of a wedge. It's so easy. Yeah, the best always make golf look easy. We know it's not. Must have been hard to control those emotions. You know, knowing it was so close and, you know, we were thinking with, you know, four or five holes to go, go that the job was pretty much done. That's been the issue. She hasn't been able to control the emotions. And we've spoke with Wax Lyrical about a golf game. Not only does she hit the ball a million miles, it doesn't look a lot wrong with her short game and putting, does there? And to have both of those combinations, you think, well, what can go wrong? But it's been being composed, trying to get it over the line, or in her case, trying to shoot good scores and stay in tournaments. I always think you can tell how popular the winner is with the amount of people that go on that green. And all those players, the amount of them that said, I'm proud of you, they know what she's been through. What a wonderful performance. And uh, well, she's heading home. I'm sure some family and friends will be uh, in Pattaya next week where she'll be teeing it up on the uh, LPGA Tour as a winner again, Patty Tavatanakit. Opened up with the round of the day on day one, a 66, and ended it with the round of the day on day four, a 65. A wire-to-wire -wire victory, as dominant as they come. Maybe there's something about this Riyadh Golf Club. Alison Lee won by eight, she wins by seven. And you need to go to UCLA University if you want to win a round here. Both of those players did go over to California. Is her, her witness checks nearly double the one she won when she won the Chevron Championship. Don't forget, $750,000, that first prize for Patty Tava Tanakin. Well, congratulations to her. The Ladies European Tour off to Morocco next from all of us in Riyadh. Goodbye for now.
there's a lot of frustration out on the golf course right now. There's a few players getting hot under the collar. Yeah, Paddy Tabatanaka not winning since uh, that Chevrolet Championship, although she was part of the, uh, the Thailand team that won last year at the uh, International Crown. And here she is, four shots ahead of the chasing pack and in with another birdie opportunity, whereas Henselites found that back bunker. The awkward spot there.